as ready as I'll ever be. Okay, it is recording. Go for it. All right. So welcome, everybody. It's it's really, really good to be finally GMing you crowd um, rather than <laughs> watching Ian make a complete hash of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, we know. In, yeah. in, in all serious, it's been it's been fantastic watching your 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 various streams and and podcasts. And I I said to to Ian a couple of times, you know, I really should get on here and 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 run a game for you, given that I I'm you know one of the people behind the rule system that you're using. So we we discussed doing this with Leon S uh, to sort of showcase the system, play test a scenario that's going to be coming out for the game, and that's what we're going to be doing today. So welcome everybody. Um, you. you all have your your characters which were sent beforehand. And what we'll do is a quick introduction for everybody. So I, I would imagine you've already introduced yourselves um, behind the scenes, but we'll do it for the benefit of the recording, anybody watching this. Um, and uh, and then we will get into the scenario itself. Just as a bit of background, um, the scenario is set in Jack Vance's Elder Isles, which is the setting for the Leon S trilogy of novels. Uh, the design mechanism is publishing a, a game based on these novels. So this is scenario is all set in Jack Vance's world. Um, it's uh, the, the Elder Isles is a, 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 an archipelago uh, situated between the south coast of Britain and the Bay of Biscay, effectively, and sank in the ages of antiquity. And it's home to the ancient city of Is, the kingdom of Leoness, which is frequently referenced in Breton and, and uh, Cornish mythology as well. So there's a, a sort of a solid mythological base to, to this place. But Jack Vance took it and made it his own. And so this, this game and this setting is based firmly on those novels. You don't need any knowledge of Jack Vance's books to enjoy this, or at least you shouldn't. Um, hopefully there's enough background in each of your characters that will uh, allow you to uh, integrate fully with the setting. But if you've got any questions at all, don't hesitate to ask them as we go through. Uh, and I'll be more than happy to sort of pause and explain things. So um, with no further ado, the scenario is called In High Dudgeon, um, and you are all members of a travelling entertainment group called Madame Nenever's Festive Fellows. Madame Nenever is a tall, fierce, grey-haired woman um, who is both a fortune teller, a seer, and a very accomplished actress, and dare I say, a confidence trickster as well. But she's put together this, this travelling troupe that circuits the Elder Isles, um, travelling between different fairs, events, and just sort of market days. Um, so you're used to travelling with her. You, you've shipped her to all kinds of places, um, in the time that you've been sort of traveling together, which means that you're all colleagues. Now, some of you will have been with uh, Madame Nenever longer than others, but you all know each other. You're all friendly. Um, you, you've all performed together. And each of your characters has a particular performing art that you are a specialist in. You're all quite different uh, with different ranges of skills and more importantly, different kinds of backgrounds and motivations. Um, Madame Nenever has kind of allowed some of you to stay just because it's easier. Uh, some of you have been picked up because you have definite skills that, that bring in the crowd, such as juggling or uh, archery and, and so forth. So why don't we have an introduction from um, each of the players? Um, I'm not going to choose anybody. I'm going to hope you'll be nice and adult about this and decide who's going to go first. How much information do you want us to ch share? I'm quite happy that, to go first, but if you... That is entirely up to you how much you wish to divulge from your character sheet or not. Okay, that, that's fine. So I, I'll, go f I'll go first and then... Uh, I'm quite happy. Um, do you want it in character or out of character? Whatever you are comfortable with. Okay, then. So it, I would say probably imagine that we're sort of like sat down and this might have been uh, my character's introduction, you know, early on. Um, when you first see um, Serfong, he is a huge man huge man he's got muscles on top of muscles he looks like he can quite happily rip arms off the innocent or the wary quite easily he's completely 
bald headed it, it's shaved to perfection there is nothing on there uh, at all but almost like in pure contrast to this he has a huge um, bushy beard he is rumored um, to have the strength of 10 normal men maybe even more and this really sort of like um, gives an idea of his wonderful um, act that he does because he is a strong man he is somebody who gets in front of the crowd and he lifts huge weights and he bends iron bars to or catches barrels and he can even pick up uh, a wagon a loaded wagon and pull it along in the total absence of an oxen at all he loves to wrestle he loves to demonstrate his um, strength and frequently before actually engaging in his act you will see him rubbing himself over with um, some kind of oil to make his muscles glisten and that's just like conjured up an that. incredible mental image uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not get rid of um, no. about, he's he's quite quiet he frequently um gets tongue-tied and you have this you have become aware that maybe he's not telling you his whole story sometimes in around the campfire when you're talking about various um, past exploits he becomes very quiet and doesn't sort of like um, communicate at all sometimes he's very much by himself and you see him writing or scrawling something down in a book and he keeps this very personal to himself and sort of like doesn't want anybody else to sort of like um, see what's in there yeah and that's my character so okay. for the mighty Sephard the mighty, Thank you the very mighty. Much. i'd like to go next because i'm mr pickles and i am playing a very very uh, flashy character um, Baskel the Deft, uh, always juggling things, uh, throwing throwing anything into the air to get a laugh. He's the class clown of this group, uh, or of this troop, I should say. Um, he's anything for a laugh. He's picking up mugs of ale and throwing them. If, if there's been brands in the fire, you bet those are going to get juggled at some point. And really, <laughs> really, it's part of the act that things get dropped. It's it's an artistic form of buffoonery that, that Baskel the Deft is always trying to impress upon you guys. He's a bit of a flirt. He's very snarky and sarcastic. Uh, he's probably said something that hurt each of your feelings uh, maybe once or twice or daily, depending on how sensitive you are. Um, he's been trying to do more questionable acts the longer you've known him he's up to what is it four cats that you can juggle it's it's upsetting it, it is uh, <laughs> but it's more upsetting when he adds in the rats the rats and cats um <laughs> you guys probably noticed that uh this madam neneva uh has caught baskel's eye and you, you've probably seen him staring a little too long and other than that you've seen him get very bitter about people who who, uh, who heckle him or, or disapprove of his acts. He loves laughter, but he hates heckling. I'll pass mm. the mic to whomever else would like to take it. Who's next? Um, I'll go next. No, after you, back. Thank you. I'm Mandelbro, the, or Mandelbrot, the destined. Um, he's from uh, De Hout. You'll see him there. He's a very happy person. He's, he's, quite young he's in his late 20s um you, you'll see him in his show and he loves his show very much he makes people laugh he the all oh, the cries the the, the women's little giggles as he tosses and makes coins dance around on a board in front of him chuck in a florin why don't you and see what happens it spins around in between the little copper pennies and just see what happens there um, you'll also see him playing with um, his violin, which he loves. He's got his violin. And people always dance when he has it out. And it, is it the will? Who knows? They just like to dance when his violin is out. It sometimes floats with its own accord, or is that just an illusion? Who knows? But he's, he's, a ha he's so happy, and he's always wanting to please, and he likes to... He, 
he's got some great ideas for things to happen. And he, he's, he's, he'll go to the madame and he'll say, why not try this? And she'll take that on board. And maybe she will, maybe she won't. But if he makes money, he's a happy person. Other things he does is he, he likes to... Um, He's got a habit of making people blurt out the truth of things. And, well, is it really the truth or are they just saying what's on their mind? Who knows? Um, he likes to talk about his family. He has a large family. You'll, you'll hear about his many brothers and sisters. Um, and it's, it, it's something he will, over the fire, just sit down and, uh, and just witter on. And then most importantly to him, he likes to talk about how he one day will become a powerful magician and maybe fall along with them, um, maybe Tamarello or um, Sartsnack, or maybe even Mergen himself. You never know. He's just, he, he, he likes to do these little tricks, but one day he will have his own castle and you may all live there with him, drinking fine wines and having great meals, not to work a day of your life. I can spin coins out of thin air. We will see. Oh, that's wonderful. Lot. So last but not least, Longshanks. Hi guys. Um, so I'm Longshanks and I am playing Sir Jedney of Thrask, archer, swordsman, writer of wrongs. So as you can suggest, he's an archer. Um, he joins the, uh, the Festive Fellows after quite a bit of convincing, unfortunately, um, from Madame Never. I can't pronounce her name. Madame Never. Neneve. Nanave, thank you. Um, she was very reluctant to um, have me in, in the party. However, once I started to show her all my trick shots with my longbow, shooting apples out of people's mouths, in the air, me being blindfolded, and even upside down, or even hanging off my beautiful distorter, Hollyhock. But there we go. She eventually accepted, and I've been bringing in the, the florins ever since, either showing people my amazing archery or even teaching those scallywags in the towns how to how to use a sword to get their lady loves but there we go i'm always accompanied by my beautiful falcon sheba and i often do tricks with her as well if it's part of my show that's it Jolly good. So we have four of the festive fellows gathered together. Uh, Sefford the Mighty, Bascule the Deft, Mandelbrot the Destined, and Sir Jedney of Thrusk. And you have, you and the whole troop have shipped up in the village of Low Dudgeon, which is in the Kingdom of Pomperol. Uh, Pomperol is in the, uh, the east of the main Elder Isles, which is called High Brass, the biggest of those islands. Um, Pomperol backs onto the mighty and immense Forest of Tantraval, which uh, occupies the whole middle of High Brass, an absolutely immense magical forest filled with all kinds of horrible creatures, elves, fairies, ogres, trolls, uh, and even more dastardly things, plus robbers, highwaymen, ne'er-do-wells, miscreants, bandits, and that kind of stuff. Um, but that's not where you are. You are in Low Dudgeon, and Low Dudgeon is a typical idyllic Elder Isles village. Thatched cottages, peaceful rutted streets, um, a friendly tavern, some stables, a blacksmith, and all the usual accoutrements that you would have expect of, of a typical Elder Isles village. Now, you passed through another village called High Dudgeon on your way here. Um, High Dudgeon occupies a crossroads about five miles north of where Low Dudgeon is situated. And you've been able to draw quite an interesting comparison. Low Dudgeon is quite dowdy, a bit run down, a um, little bit tired and shabby. High Dudgeon, on the other hand, is prosperous. The thatch is well maintained. The Fence posts are all nicely painted. The flowers are gaily arranged in the gardens. They have a full inn rather than just a tavern because they're on a major crossroads. The tavern sign is in good, good nick. So you notice a distinct contrast between these two small settlements. Um, they're about the same size in terms of population and in terms of their facilities, but one is clearly more prosperous than the other. Now, why are you in low dudgeon to begin with? 
The reason that you're here is every year at midsummer, and it is the eve of midsummer, this very day when you arrive in Low Dudgeon, there is a traditional competition or a set of competitions that takes place over three days between High Dudgeon and Low Dudgeon, the Midsummer Games. And the Midsummer Games have become so celebrated because they've been going on for so long that they attract crowds of people from all over the region. Lots of people come from Pomperol, uh, the towns and, uh, and villages around there. They all kind of congregate on Low Dudgeon and the uh, Midsummer Meadow, which is where the games take place. And that is where you are currently based. In fact, you're not actually based in there. You're in a queue of other caravans and carriages waiting to get into Midsummer Meadow itself. Um, the central area of the meadow has already been scoped out for the games. There's a perimeter set up. Uh, little tracks have been put out. It looks like there's even a tilt for what could be jousting, you think. Um, but all sorts of games are going to be taking place there. Tents, caravans, and carriages have set up around the bigger perimeter of Midsummer Meadow, and that's where you're now queuing to get in. Stores have been set up from um, charm sellers, pie sellers, um, local merchants trying to sell their wares, fortune tellers, other traveling entertainers. Uh, so there's going to be a real party atmosphere over the next three days or so, and you are queuing at the moment to get into uh, the the meadow itself. Would one of you, I don't care who, would one of you give me a um, a perception roll, please? Probably not me. <laughs> I'm probably oh, sure. trying desperately to bend something somewhere as we're waiting. All right. Heads probably down, and this will try. Okay. Has anybody made a perception roll for me? Uh, no, and I'm going to make the perception roll because I am a very perceptive juggler looking for marks. Okay. Um, I got an easy, but I didn't get a standard. That helps. Okay, so you you right, so you failed the perception roll because all this is a standard roll. Uh, does anybody else want to give it a go? Um, well, to be quite honest, um, Mandelbrot is probably just looking, going, oh, I wonder what they're doing. Okay. Oh, I wonder what they're doing. Yeah. Yep, give me a roll, please. Uh, <laughs> it's going to come down to me rolling this. I just know. <laughs> all, right, all right, that's fair enough. Well, Madam Nenever is getting very, very, very impatient with all of this. And so she dispatches the four of you to go and see what the hell the holdup is. Why? You've been here for an hour now. Nothing has moved. Uh, nobody is giving any information. The, the various officials that are marshalling people into the meadow, they're all dealing with all kinds of different things, and she's getting very, very upset that you're, you're sitting here doing nothing at all. So the four of you are packed off to go and find out what the hell is causing the holdup. And don't come back with any half assed answers either, she says, quite fiercely. Well, so Jesney, come on, let's go. So, uh, so Jesney is in the saddle of Hollyhock. Oh, um, and so being given this instruction, he will start trotting forward up the queue um, of caravans to try and find someone who looks like they're in charge so he can politely ask them what's going on. Okay, so you parade down the uh, the long stream of caravans and carts and, uh, and little wagons that are waiting to get into the uh, into the meadow itself and you arrive at the gates there and sure enough there is a marshal who's sort of pointing people to, to where they can go and it's it's pretty noticeable that it's full to capacity now um a lot of the uh the the carts and wagons they're having to go right up to the very tree line uh which is on the far edge of the meadow uh people are probably going to end up sleeping in bushes and so forth it really is full to capacity and so it's taking so long because 
all these these carts and wagons are going to thread their way through there's quite a narrow entrance and then go and find somewhere to, to make a pitch um so it's going to be quite difficult to find anywhere that's going to be good enough for uh all the various tents that you have to be set up properly now you've already got space allocated to you that um that you can go and perform in but for sleeping and living it's going to be very very tight indeed and unless you're prepared to wait quite a long time then it may be a bit difficult to get into where you want to be i i i'll sort of like because i i probably stand very tall next to your horse um as well as i sort of like march along i'm I, i'm quite an imposing figure as well indeed you are uh, you know and so uh he might be sort of like attracting some attention from roundabout, but um, very, very sort of like um, discreetly, he'll sort of like um, bend his head towards or down to the, the rest of the group and, and sort of like says in a, a gruff but quite eloquent voice, I'm not going to sleep outside. Okay. We, we need a tent, people. We do not, we are, will not be putting Madame, Madame Nineveh in a tent. She will be sleeping in the finest accommodations. Let's have a talk with this marshal. We will, we will get a solution. Don't, don't I, you worry. For all of us, I hope. And I'll sort of like whack a huge arm onto Pascal's uh, shoulder. And they're ho not a huge amount of pressure. This is what I say. If you need anything bending, <laughs> just point me in the direction. <laughs> Okay, so so poor old Bascule, who is size nine, uh, compared with uh, Sefford, who is size eighteen, has has just kind of collapsed under the weight of uh, this this mighty paw being put on his shoulder, quite gently by Sefford's standards, but it's it's a bit like an anvil collapsing. Under, no, Sefford does all right. Else's. If, um, if Bascule sort of like falls a bit, but Bascule, um, Sefford only goes, so, oh, sorry. And sort of like stick his arms underneath um, Baskell's armpits and sort of like oh. prop him uh, back up. He says, I still don't know my own strength, really. Uh, and he'll just sort of like flex uh, a muscular arm at that. All right. So, what you can do for me, Ian, is give me an influence roll. And I'm going to let um, this be augmented by. Uh, Let's see, Bascule's endurance. Let's just see if the two of you together um, are gonna gonna impress the the marshal that you're now talking to. Um, so, Bascule, your endurance is forty four. That will give you uh, a plus ten augment to uh, brilliant to Sefford's influence roll, which takes you up to fifty four percent. It's all about how you drop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so this that take it up to um, fifty four? Did you say fifty four percent? Yeah, fifty four or less, please. Uh, got yeah. Da, da, da. My sheet is not working at the present moment in time. So just one second. Uh, ba, 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 ba. There we go. There we go. Oh, that's, that's a nice, that's a nice fumble. I'm starting as I mean to go on. Just, just put a ticket in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, the, you, you, you managed to put your full weight on, but you're not meaning to, but you put your full weight on poor old Baskew, who absolutely crumbles down to the ground. The marshal is so absolutely terrified. At, uh, at what he's seen here. Uh, we don't want any trouble, no trouble at all, but I'm sorry, the place is absolutely full. Uh, and uh, uh, Saffron, uh, uh, sorry, sorry. he sort of like looks at um, the, the crumpled body of his comrade and sort of like turns to this sort of like, almost like um, snivelling. Um, don't hurt me. He, Yeah, he just sort of like leans f down. He's probably quite flimsy oh. and and he sort of like says i'm sure you can find some room i can't it's full all full sorry no please don't hit me well and he'll sort of like rub his fist in another thing if you don't want me to hit you then we need uh, uh, a place to stay 
At this point, Mandel Brottle, um, I'll walk forward and I'll say, Saffron, my friend, there's no need for this. I'm sure this gentleman can be able to uh, to help us what we what we need. Is, is there something we can do for you, sir, to, to maybe accommodate us to 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 have a place to stay tonight? Our madam is 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 most famous, and she needs somewhere to stay. We can't have her sleeping on the road or in a ditch or a bush. We, we've come here to show us our splendors and our wares and to do amazing things. So surely you can accommodate us. I will let you attempt an eloquence roll for that, Mandelbrot. Very well put. The the simpering marshal uh, in standing there. And have we got a success? And we yes. do indeed. Eleven out of fifty nine. Excellent. Okay, so um, we've got poor old Bascule lying flat on the floor. I'm going to come <laughs> to Bascule in a second. Um, Sefford kind of leaning over, casting this enormous shadow over this clearly intimidated Marshall, and then Mandelbrot neatly and very eloquently smoothing things over. Um, there are a number of women folk that are, are sort of gathered around watching the, uh, the procession of people into this. Um, a number of them are extremely impressed by the looks of things with the physique of, uh, of Sefford the Mighty. Uh, a couple of them actually fainted when he uh, he sort of rippled his muscles just a little bit and bear in mind he hasn't even broken out the oil yet um so it, it seems that that Sefford has, has certainly impressed a couple of the lady folk because suddenly people are clamoring you can stay with me no me oh no me i have a spare bedroom i have a spare bed i have a spare place in my bed <laughs> All kinds of female attention. And, and, and Sefford is really sort of like, um, probably aware of this, but um, seems to not be engaging with them that much. And almost for anybody's perception of him, seems somewhat um, embarrassed, but at the same time, maybe twitching his peck slightly and sort of like <laughs> uh, posed. Oh, that, that, that just... That just makes matters worse. Another three people have fainted. Yeah, and he sort of like looks around. He looks at um, Baskell fainted on the floor as well. Not, uh, not all of them women either. Uh, and he's They're sort of like, he, he's just sort of like, he, he seems to be um, very, very uncomfortable. And he, he'll sort of like try to um, attract the attention of the nearest uh, lady and sort of like go, and try to make some kind of awkward gesture that might be perceived as hello or welcome okay. or something like that. All right, I'll come back to that. But there's something I want to deal with with Baskill. So Baskill, um, uh, you, you're pretty sure that your collarbone isn't broken, which is a good sign because uh, it's your favorite collarbone or one of them. Um, what I'd like from you is a perception roll while you're down on the ground. Uh, I would love to. Perception. Yep. Uh, 60 out of 66. Okay. Um, lying there, prone, um, you're kind of gazing at ankle height. Um, you, you're looking at the, the ankles of the, uh, of the marshal that's just been intimidated. You, you notice something uh, just behind the marshal's ankles on the gatepost. Uh, in front of you, there is the gatepost for the uh, the gate that's causing the holdup to get into Midsummer uh, Meadow. There is a shoe, uh, a horseshoe, uh, that somebody has nailed there or fixed there in some way. It's partly covered in weeds, partly obscured by the legs of the of the marshal. But what strikes you as being? In fact, give me a folklore roll as well. Folklore. Nine out of 46. Okay. It's upside down. Who the heck puts a horseshoe upside down somewhere? You normally have them the other way up with the prongs facing upward so that the luck stays in. This horseshoe is definitely the wrong way up. And it's nailed to the gatepost. Yes. Well, fixed to the gatepost. Um, nail is probably the wrong word because you can't actually see any nails holding it there. Do I see any rope fixing it? No, nope. it the is just, no. It's just attached to the gatepost. And you can now get to your feet and uh, dust your spit out the dirt and whatnot. Yeah, um, I, I'd like to get closer to it because um, I'm, I'm curious about what this should mean. 
Um, uh, but I'd like to do so without getting uh, attracting attention, uh, like having so, the attention on the big man. Okay. Well, uh, virtually all the attention is currently on um, <laughs> Shepard and Mandelbrot. At like the a moment. decoy now, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like a land. decoy. Now, the, the, there's been a, a steady sort of press of of, um, of the local low dudgeon ladies who are, who are all trying to attract your attention, but there's one who catches your eye. Standing at the back, she's she's not falling over you. She hasn't fainted. She's incredibly pretty. She's uh, probably mid to late twenties, auburn hair, hazel eyes. Um, she's wearing a a very plain uh, brown dress, um, a sort of dark girdle wrapped around her, and and a kind of a hood partially over her hair. Um, her hair's tied back, pulled away from her face. Um, enormously beautiful. This woman is absolutely stunning. She will be played by Monica Bellucci in the film version of this. Um, she has actually caught your eye, and she she sort of just puts raises a hand and says, um, I actually have room for, for four at my cottage if anybody wants to sleep there. So, Seth, I'm going to go... Uh, oh, I, 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 I would like to uh, uh, d take you up on um, on that um, that um, offer. If um, yes, I c c would I be able? And he sort of like starts to look at the other members of the party as if to say, "Can he? Uh, is, is this one all right?" And it's sort of like look around for some kind of acknowledgement, and you, you, the rest of you sort of like do see that he seems to be somewhat tongue-tied now. That this, you, this... You, you turned a very interesting shade of puce. Yeah, and he he sees this 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 lovely lady is sort of like almost like having a, a strange effect on him. Do, do, I, 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 would that be all right? Well, well, she says, um, my mother-in-law as well, who lives next door, she has some land that backs onto, well, the, the old meadow there. If, if there's more of you, then I'm sure that we could accommodate you. We've got enough room for you to get your carts up there. And I do like your horse, she says, turning to see Edney. Zephyr, my friend, this is, this is brilliant news, at least my... my Madame ne ne Nevener, can you can get there and, and we can have a set up and lovely and we'll get all the, all the shows out. It'll be brilliant. It's fantastic. And we're on our own there, in a sense. We can have complete control of everything. It will be very, very peaceful. There is no doubt about that. It's yes. Not, it's, it's sound, it sounds perfect. Um, and I'm sure um, Hollyhock here would, would appreciate the company at night as well, if you, if, if you like the whole, if you like her. Uh, well, she doesn't have any stables, of course, but uh, they yeah. will. Uh, the, 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 there is a small outbuilding. They they will do their best to make sure that uh, it's going to be warm at night as well. Uh, nice. She's quite sure that Hollyhock will be uh, will be more than comfortable. So, if I, uh, uh, sort of like move more towards her. Is she like at the back of a crowd or? Yeah, she j just sort of standing, and and she's one that hasn't really forced herself on anybody. She's just sort of through sheer force of personality. Um, she has caught your eye. And uh, and and really sort of stood out by being normal yeah. rather than being affected like so many of them are being. Uh, and, and of course now it, it's pretty obvious that everybody's going to be scrabbling to find a place to sleep. So if you can secure something sooner rather than later, it's going to be to the greater good. Uh, Sefer does sort of like move uh, his move through the crowd towards her, um, almost like paying no attention, expecting the crowd to almost like move. It's amazing how it does naturally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like a, the Red part. Sea's part. And and he, when, when he gets to the, uh, the lovely lady, um, he was sort of like, um, hold out his hand as if he wants her to put her hand in his so he can maybe, you know, maybe kiss it, maybe, um, you oh, know, word. that's forward. And uh, okay. he, so, he sort of like says, she, he sort of like says, we will be very grateful uh, of your uh, offer. And then 
even before she moves, he'll notice that his hands are sort of like out there and suddenly sort of like uh, pull it back. And uh, All right. Uh, what I would like from you is a, a roll against your fall in love easily passion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you really want to fail this. Oh gosh! I I succeed. Oh, you did. I um, I, I, I <laughs> you you have never seen a more beautiful creature in your life. She is radiance personified. You can see the two of you settling down together, children, grandchildren, um, walking hand in hand, skipping through the forest, flowers in your hair. Oh, From yeah. somewhere in the background, a music is playing in a stirring symphonic way. The wind catches her hair and blows it, her eyes twinkle. And then someone shoves you in the back and says, get a move on, big fella. You're blocking the bloody road. And it, he, he, that sort of like breaks him out of his um, his lovely trance that he was in, sort of like yeah. realise. You, you, you are now, you, you've now fallen hook, line and sinker. Uh, most definitely Renier. and as somebody pushes me from behind i'll just sort of like slowly turn round and not go to hit the person but maybe look rather sternly at sorry sternly down at them you have to look quite a way down the the person that sort of shoved you to to make you get out of the way is quite a small person uh small and pugnacious looking dressed in uh rather dark clothing got black smudges over his face uh, a sort of a crooked sneer uh is playing over his mouth as he looks up at you he does not look to be in the slightest bit intimidated puts his fists on his hips glares up at you well are you gonna move or what and I, I'll sort of like look between him and look at my new, my new lover, and back and forwards. And I, I'm trying to, can I almost like try to gain some kind of um, understanding of how she's reacting to this? Uh, is she sort of like thinking, um, "Wow, you know, I hope he can deal with this person," or sort of like thinking, oh, "Don't make a mess of it." Can I maybe she... take an insight role for that? You can give me an insight roll. I'm not very good at it, so it will be. Um, um, yeah, I got 84 to 29, so yeah, I have no idea. That's, that's pretty miserable. You're, you're too besotted with, with her beauty, and of course, pummeling this little oik into the ground, which is really what he deserves, you reckon, would probably not be a, a, a good thing for your first date. So, um, in which case, a, I'll just sort of like um, reluctantly sort of like step. Uh, to one side and quite okay. eloquently sort of like right. the the rest of you um you you've seen this happen before with regular occurrence usually wherever you happen to be performing um Sefford falls in love with somebody I am a strong There's man and a natural no, lover. I'm just uh, wondering how, how badly this one will, will <laughs> potentially end. Mandel Brothel okay, turns the, to uh, Jedry and he'll be like, it'll play out as it will. We've got a place to... Why well, have we come to, to Hasbro? Oh, I know, that's what I was going to It'll play out as well. At least we've got a place to stay tonight, which is brilliant. Okay. So you, you do have somewhere that, uh, that, that the whole troop can go and sort of camp out. You're going to be spread between two properties. Uh, Renya, who is the, the, the lady that's come to your aid, um, and Renya's mother-in-law, who lives next door. They've got a couple of cottages just a bit further back up the road. So it's not going to take too much to extricate the, uh, the, the little caravan that you've got from the line up and go and... Uh, and, and make your way over there and they do have plenty of land that backs onto the meadow so it's it's a bit distant from where the main happenings are but it will be nice and and, and quiet and peaceful um madame Nenova seems seems quite happy with that arrangement she negotiates a price uh with renya hands over some coins and um you you all sort of spend the next hour or so kind of getting settled in um now bascule you you said you wanted to try and get a a closer look at the uh, the horseshoe. There's lots of activity. People are sort of going off in the, the direction of uh, of the cottages. It's going to leave you with with plenty of time to uh, have a scout around on your own if you wish. I would love to. Um, in, in particular, I wanted to get a closer look at the horseshoe. Um, yep. uh, uh, since we're probably not going to do any entertaining at this this time, and I do need my decoys. We're yep. going to be entertaining. 
Okay, um, so what I'll have from you is a, I'll have a stealth roll, and you can make this easy, so it's going to be half a game. Right, uh, stealth, that's uh, something I never practiced. Oh, well, good, I, I did make easy. <laughs> Didn't make standard. You, you should do it, be well over 100. So uh, while the marshal is sort of getting everybody, he's recovered from being intimidated by, uh, by Sephard the Mighty, um, he, he's busy sort of running through his little clipboard and getting people organized. No one's paying any attention to you um, as you're sort of digging around at the base of, uh, of the gatepost where this horseshoe is. Um, there are no nails that you can see. You can't tell what is fixing the horseshoe on there. Um, but it certainly doesn't come off when you try and sort of pull at it. It's very, very, very firmly fixed. Hmm. Oh, but I know somebody who can who can probably break something off like that. I, I'm going to go uh, check up with with Surfot, uh, uh, Surfot, yeah, Surfot, uh, and and see if he wants to help me out uh, with some lost treasure. Okay, so uh, you you uh, go and find the others at uh, at Renya's cottage uh, where everyone is sort of getting settled in, um, and yeah, t- tell Surfot about what you found. Uh, Surfot, I I just found. The darndest thing. I and it's the darndest thing because I don't even think that you could help me here. But I'm just checking. You know, it's you. You're known for bending things and being, well, big muscled, right? Yes. And you'd love you'd love to help me out. After I mean, you pushed me in the dirt pretty hard. I didn't want to be eating dirt this early into our trip into this town. <laughs> uh, you'd uh, like to pay me back? <laughs> well, uh, maybe you can. Um give me something else in return i i do apologize you know but really i you need to start lifting or something <laughs> yeah yeah one of these days I'll, I'll come be lifting with you but right now we have this mystery in the ground that i can't quite get with my my tiny little fingers and maybe somebody like you if but... you would help me um with my mystery as well yeah, yeah. Tell me all about your mystery while we're walking over there. Um, just, oh, but actually, if we're going to be doing that, I should get some of my cats or rat. No, not that. No, not like this. I'm going to. I'm just going to get some clubs really quick from my box, and then you can tell me about your your little mystery while we're walking to to my mystery. It's it it's the the mystery of love. Oh dear. The, the, I'm. Absolutely certain, Surfy, that this time it's going to work out for you. I saw the way she looked at you. It's, it's in her eyes. And you know that's where love is, is stored. You saw her looking at me? I, I was right there spitting dirt out. Oh, this, uh, my heart just skipped a beat there, Pascal. Yeah. Uh, she looked at me? I just get, uh, you're, you're good with the lady folk. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm very good. Uh, it, it's the way she called out and said, "I have room for four. Yeah, she well, was calling that to you. He says, I, I, what, "What do you think of this?" Uh, and as we walk along, he sort of like brings out from within his britches um, his little notebook, and he sort of like um, flicks through the pages, and it is dwarfed by his massive um, hands, and he, he says, "What, what, what, what do?" You, I love to watch your eyes at night glistening across the sky. Your lips are puce and berry red for me to kiss and sigh. <laughs> Very good. I like that. <laughs> what, what? Pascal, what? Do you think it will make her love me? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, that was beautiful. Um, I do have a skill. Fall in love. I do have a skill, art, poetry. If I need to roll, <laughs> you, do, you do. Oh no, no, no! Yeah, that that was perfect. I'm giving you that one. It was great. <laughs> I'm not crying. This is dirt from when you pushed me over. Do you think it will? <laughs> okay. Advise me later. Let, let let's look at your mystery. Um, so I wanted to lead him over to the area because you said it was still fairly crowded. Um, yeah, there's and... lots of people going, but no one's paying any attention to the gate post, though. Uh, the, when they see uh, that there's this, this huge guy coming back, they, uh, they sort of get out of the way a little bit. 
that's not good enough for me though because i i meant to grab my clubs and if i didn't maybe a knife or two i'd like to make a distraction okay and and, and you know if if there's there has to be a distraction here so while while uh, my friend i'll, I'll point out and i'll say surfy go down there there's a, a horseshoe you gotta break it off and and stow it away with your beautiful okay. poetry all right and then i'll i'll do the distraction okay so give me a uh, juggling roll i think please Ooh. I almost think there should be um, circus music in the background now. Go. Somebody's doing all of that stuff over in the meadow. There's various musicians. <laughs> so it's oh. a small orchestra that's <laughs> playing. Around. I may have accidentally hit gambling, and I didn't mean to. Here is my juggling. I <laughs> failed standard. Oh, oh gambling. Okay. So you've. Uh, let's see. I don't gamble. Okay, you needed a 59, you rolled a 76. Um, I'll tell you what, because there is so many people around, I'll, I will let you have it at an easy roll. So uh, we, we will give you that. Uh, people sort of watching you, juggling with the clubs. Yeah, 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 yeah it's not bad. You sort of slightly uh, lose the rhythm on a couple of them. Um, but they've kind of seen that before. But enough people are sort of distracted while Sefford is, uh, is is trying to pry away the uh, the horseshoe. So, Ian, what I'd like from you is a brawn roll, please. Oh, yes. Let's get ready to rumble. I got 16 out of 95. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Do I you, take the uh, post as well? <laughs> you, you, yep. You, the, the 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 entire gatepost comes out of the ground, um, dripping soil and mud and weeds. Um, the horseshoe is stubbornly fixed to it. The marshal and various other people turn around and stare at you. And what are you doing with that bloody gatepost? Don't hit me. Yeah, and it, it's just sort of like it, it's sort of like look at it for a while and maybe sort of like shift his hands further down as if it's almost like looking at like a club and he, yep. he just sort of like look at them and said I like it I'm going to take it if it's all right with you but that uh, yeah no, not, not a problem yeah yeah <laughs> Hope you're very, very just happy. holding this yeah he says, okay we understand then all right, and bear in mind that, that about three foot of this gate post was sunk into the ground <laughs> yeah. uh, with a, another four feet sticking out the top. You, you've pulled seven foot's worth of lumber out of the ground and are currently walking back to Renius Cottage with this thing strung over your shoulder. Yeah. All right, so, so Baskill and, uh, and Sefford are busy um, vandalising um, different parts of uh, Low Dudgeon. Um, this is going to give Mandelbrot Siedney... Uh, Chance to sort of settle in, wander around, get the lay of the land. Um, is there anything that the two of you would like to do in particular, or are you happy just to sort of stroll about and see what's going on? No, well, Mandelbrot will be um, he'll be setting up his, um, his his entertainment area, and he'll be there. He'll be, this is going to be brilliant. I can put this over here. They'll come over there. They'll watch. They'll see. It'll be beautiful. Now, what you need to do, Jedry, is so, Jen, you need to be thinking of somewhere a nice distant place with a good line of sight. You can set up your little targets that you do with your arrows, maybe a horse play, something like that. It'd be wonderful to be able to get the florins in or the, the coins, everything like that. It'd be lovely. Yes, yes, I was, I was just thinking that. And so Jedney would be, so he would have gone to the area that's been designated for the uh, Festive Fellows and he yep. would okay. be um, counting paces to work out the distance that they've been given so he can work out what what range he's going to what set sort of range targets. Yeah, then, yep. um, okay. um, he's going to, um, and with him, he'll have brought sort of like um, a bundle of, of wooden staves or swords that so, and then he'll sort of like put them down first and then be doing his counting. Then after he's got work that out in his head, he'll uh, turn and in a very loud and very eloquent voice say, swordsmanship. Swordsmanship, it is the way to a woman's heart. Come, boys, gentry, learn how to fight with a sword and become a mighty warrior and woo your lady's heart. And he's going to try and start attracting some... Um, okay, waste, some boys wasting. That, 
Yeah. Some people to come in to my talk. Yeah. See if uh, oh. anyone wants to come in and have a sword lesson. Okay. What I would like from Mandelbrot and Sir uh, Yedney is a D12 roll. Okay, so what have we got there? Uh, uh, so Mandelbrot, you've got a nine, and Sir Yedney has a two. So, okay. Um, right, Mandelbrot. You're setting up your, uh, your you, you have a barrel, which uh, is, is usually good for making your, your coins dance. Uh, you, you've got a, a little stool that you put your fiddle on. You're sort of getting sort of set up there. Um, one of the locals um, sort of is, is watching you uh, as, as you sort of set out your little sign that says Mandelbrot to the Destined. Magician extraordinaire. Finest magician in the Elder Isles, etc., etc., etc. And says, "Oh, are you are you a wizard? No wizard, my friend. No, I am a magician. Come, come closer. Come have a look and see what tantalizes the little, little fella. Sort of, sort of waddles closer a little bit, looking down. He's squinting at you. So you do like magic then and tricks and stuff. I have been known to bedazzle." and bewilder and befuddle people. Do you have a few coins you can spare? Uh, no, nah, I'm a bit skint at the moment, but I was just going to say that there's been a, there's, there was another wizard, there's, and, and I thought you might know him, and if you might be friends or something, there was that Tamara, uh, tam, 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 Tamarelli. Tamarello? Or, yeah, him, him, yeah. Really? yeah it, it was in high dudgeon a few few days ago, I think, or was it last week? Anyway, but somebody said they'd seen him up there, or my friend, sister's brother's cousin's friend did. Oh, yeah. really? That's, that's amazing. Are you Tamarillo as good as him? him? Well, I, I'd like to think I'm, I'm, I will be as good as him. In fact, I, I do believe I am probably as good as him. I'd try I my best. Not. I bet you're not. Well, he I turned me into him, my you. friend. He turned you... Did you get better? I did, yeah. Oh, I'm glad to see. But I know I can make your coins dance for the will of their own. I Go on, then. Make... Show me your coins, my friend. I, I can't. I told you, I haven't gotten on. I'm a bit skin. No coins, but why, my, why, my friend? Why are you here? Do you, would you like Well, you to... said you were a magician. You, well, you could... I... Ma magic sum up, then. Go on, he folds his arms and stands there, daring. <laughs> the crowd beginning to gather now, going, oh, it's not very good, is he? <laughs> and then you'll see Mandelbrot just smile, wink. He'll put his, his hands close to his blue jacket he's wearing with little toggles around it, covering over his yellow top. And he'll stand there and he'll hook his two little fingers together and he will make a little noise. It goes, and he will make these coins dance, hopefully. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so give me a uh, a roll for your uh, your fairy magic skill as you cancel uh, coin spin penny dance. Great name for a swell that one. <laughs> and I failed miserably. Um, <laughs> Sixty-seven um, out of forty-four. Okay, um, so uh, can, can you, I you, use a can I use a point of luck just to re-roll that purely on the inspiration? You can either re-roll it or flip it if that will give you a better result. No, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely re-roll it. <laughs> so, okay, <laughs> the roll. First luck point gone. Oh, so close it's so far. 49 out of 44. Do you know what? I will let you have that. I'm, oh, I'm you. generous. You. Now, don't start <laughs> this, Lars, because they'll be wanting yeah, it in my game. Down, <laughs> well, well, I'm, I'm, I have it one. Well, for, for, for the benefit of you guys and for the listening public, mm. we've built a new rule into the Leoness uh, system, which is if you get within 5%, if it's a fail, but within about 5% of what you need, you can have it, but at a consequence. Ooh, so you, you, you've, like you've got it. a yes, <laughs> but 
result. So you finally, after a couple of tries and squinting and blowing very hard, get the, the coins to sort of start dancing around and doing little hot scotch and sort of doing a little marching thing. And, and people are nudging, oh, it's not bad, is he? Oh, it's, that's, that's quite good. And sort of all beginning to sort of um, clam around and, uh, oh, this is fun. Oh, yeah, look at that one. Oh, that's rather good, that. Um, and you sort of bask in the applause. You 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 get a bit more um, creative with the dancing that the coins are making, and people are sort of clapping, and uh, they're all reasonably impressed. And uh, at the end of it, you take a bow. The coins clatter back onto the top of the barrel, and people will sort of politely applaud. Um, and as you go to thank them, you look down and see that all the coins have gone. And the little guy that got you starting with the trick is now running up high speed in the direction of the tap. Oh, no. <laughs> and at which point, um, Muddlebutt will, be, will shake his head and go, <laughs> the silly chappy. And he'll, he'll pull out his bow and, and his, his violin, and he will then cast... Um, well, what, what he will do is he will hold his violin and bow in his right hand, and with his left hand, he'll make a little... And a flicker of his fingers, and then he'll go <laughs> and cast um, Jig Tune Fiddlewick. Fiddle Jig Tune well. Fiddlewell. Yes, yeah, sorry, my apologies. Yes. And hopefully this will do. Oh, 46 out of 44. Yeah. Again, <laughs> um, the, 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 your, your violin starts playing, but it's horribly out of tune, mm. and it sounds like a bit. A bit like a four-year-old's first attempt. But, uh, <laughs> I've uh, been there. Actually, it sounds not unlike one of the cats when uh, Bastion's <laughs> yeah. juggling it, oh, and it comes oh. into contact with one of the oh. other cats. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah but, but people sort of covering their ears, small children are crying, windows are breaking. Um, it's not very good. Uh, mm. See, Edney, uh, you are busy. You, you can hear all this going on, and... Uh, so there's this horrible scraping sound, but uh, you're busy sort of staking out your, uh, your, your, where your targets will be. You've got your swords lined up. And you notice that just a bit further up the field, um, there's a group of people practicing what looks like the preparations for one of the contests that's going to be held here. Um, donkey jousting is one of the main events that will be held on day three of this competition. Uh, always a hotly contested event, and it's exactly what it sounds like. But this is jousting, but with donkeys. So um, it's slightly less impressive than the uh, the real thing. Um, you can see that, uh, that this appears to be the uh, the low dudgeon team that's uh, getting their, their practicing in. Um, the, uh, the jousters wear buckets for helmets. Um, they have broomsticks for lancers. Uh, their, their donkeys are standing there, chewing grass, looking quite obstinate about all of this. Um, but eventually they manage to sort of coerce them into getting up to a, a healthy canter. And they plod towards each other at low speed, brooms out. And just at the crucial moment, one of the saddle straps breaks on the one of the donkey jousters he is unceremoniously dumped off his horse there is a horrible cracking sound as he hits the floor when they're followed by a shriek of pain oh dear um so so Yetney, seeing this and his interest has been piqued his, but then seeing the crash and the the the, the shriek of pain he'll uh He'll make his way over. It's sort of like as a quick, at a, at a jog. So oh, jog it's, it's way you, 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 you jog yeah, over to see if you can maybe help or something. And the, yeah. um, the, the the chap that's fallen off the horse, he's landed quite badly on his broom arm. Um, it, it's 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 not looking good. You think that could be broken? The, uh, the it's before. swelling rapidly. He's gone green around the gills. Uh, people sort of huddle around him. Oh no! Our prize lancer. Oh, oh, we were a surefire to win this year. Oh. People are crying. They're gathering around. They don't know what to do. This, this sounds like a terrible tragedy. Their best jouster in the donkey jousting, incapacitated. Oh, no, what can we do? If only there was another competent jouster somewhere here in Low Dungeon that could take his place. Um, so you'll just hear a... 
true. <clears throat> as um, so, Yedney sort of like not muscles his way through the crowd, but sort of okay. like push gently pushes his way through to the crowd to get to the front, and I'm then you to look at you, and he just goes seen that injury before um and he will sort of like walk forward and say let me see if i can help um and he'll he'll want to care for you sort of like look at the the sort of like gently touch the collarbone um to see if it's poked through the skin or if Is it's it a scream fit to wake the dead <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah no so... that's completely gone here and then he'll take his um his jacket off and he'd like to try and um, make a sling. I mean, he's seen these sorts of injuries before okay. um, in in, joust, <laughs> in in full full scale jousting, and he'll say, "I've I've seen these before um, up north. It's uh, it's quite a nasty injury here. This is what we do." And then he'll attempt to make a sling out of his out of his jacket. He, he's going to attempt to make a first aid roll at forty four percent. Is what he's going yes. to do. Yes, he is. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it. Um. No, uh, he, 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 he's not. He's seen it. He's seen this injury. And he's yeah, seen you, people you, be. You, you, you've seen people make slings. Uh, yes. Yeah. But they, they usually end up a bit better than that. <laughs> um, you're kind of gently ushered out of the way. This is, you know, we have people that are quite good at doing this. Um, <laughs> and the, the, the poor chap is kind of carried off. And uh, the rest of the jousting team is standing around wondering what on earth they're going to do. Um, one of them looks at you and says, is that your get up down there? And points in the direction of the targets and the and the swords. Well, yes, it is. Are you some kind of knight then? I am. My name is Sir Jedney Thrusk. Archer. Look. Swordsman. Swordsman. Writer of wrongs. Wrongs. Any good at jousting? <laughs> uh, mediocre. That'll do. Can you ride a donkey? I'd rather ride a horse. Uh, it's got to be a donkey. <laughs> a small horse. A donkey <laughs> points at the donkey. <laughs> that That's a donkey. The donkey is oh. looking at you quite on <laughs> Well, all the hawks are looking at the donkey, quite jealous, actually. The donkey's probably got one of those straw hats on with the ears. <laughs> <laughs> and ex and ex called Jeremiah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe. Oh, you could, give, you could give, give it, give it some thought. We're, we're desperate to win. We can't lose again. It'll be the tenth year running. Oh well. What, what's the other team like? Are that. They must be pretty high good dungeon. if you've lost for 10 years. Yeah, high, high dungeon. dungeon. What, high what, dungeon. what are they like? Oh, they've, they've won a, the games outright every year for 10 years, the bastards. Oh, Never well, again. We're um, going to have them this year. You all we were. Um, people are shaking their heads sadly. And, and it transpires that the, what they say is correct. High dungeon of one consistently for the past 10 years. Wow. Morale in low dungeon is pretty miserable by now. We, we can't have that. We can't have that. If you were a sure, win to, sure thing to win this year... It was going to be our year! <laughs> We've been practising night and day for seven you. months! Or in that case, you surely will with me on your team. <laughs> what, lose? No, win, of course. Oh, win! Well, if you're sure, people sort of looking at you... Uh, you you are a knight, then you can't. You have done this I've, before. I've done this before. Mm. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll 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 give you a go then. Um, we we pra they give you the times for when they do their practicing, and they they encourage you to come along for the practice sessions. Uh, the spirits are too low at the moment. They've all decided to go off uh, to get a drink at the at the tavern. You're invited to go with them if you wish, so that you talk strategy and things. I, I, he, he will. He'll he'll wander off with them with the town and um, impart any knowledge that he has as any appropriate places. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, it it, it useful tips and things. Yeah, donkey jousting, given that it's done at a much lower speed than the usual thing and brooms and so forth, it seems to have completely different dynamics and <laughs> rules to normal jousting. But you oh. think you might be able to get the hang of it? It's fine. And if it helps these poor people actually win for a change, then why the heck not? 
Okay, so um, you've got yourself settled in at Renya's Cottage. Um, you've managed to haul a gate post and horseshoe out of the ground that it was firmly anchored into. Um, you've uh, impressed the locals with skills of magic and sorcery. <laughs> and uh, we, you, we now have a new contestant in the donkey jousting team. So it sounds to me like things are sort of progressing pretty well indeed. Um I would imagine that... Uh, ah, yes, there, there's a, a couple of other things that I would like to do. Um, Ian, I will mm. have a perception roll from you, please. Yeah. Come on, Rob. I did press it. Uh, oh, we, oh there, there you go. Um, 75 out of 33. <laughs> okay, miserable failure. All right, that's uh, that's fair enough. Uh, so, Bascule and uh, Zephyr, you've you've carted the the gate post back to uh, to where you're staying. Uh, what do you want to do with this this horseshoe and the gate post? Yeah, I'll you said, you're not bringing that filthy thing in here. Out the back with it. Go on. Zephyr uh, uh, is sort of like uh, almost like give it to uh, Bascule, as if to say. Sorry. Skill can't carry that. It's flattened. It, says, yeah, it, yeah. it didn't come off. So I just brought everything. Well, yeah, I, I saw that. And the guy who didn't like my juggling. But I, I saw that you took the whole whole post. And I, I only needed the, the horseshoe. You can keep the post. That's your that's your payment. I, it's just the, the horseshoe, maybe, if you could break that off. If you're strong enough, that is. Right. Do you think you are? Yeah, well, I could wrestle I... eight men, you know. Yeah, but can eight you get men. a horseshoe off a post? He goes, I could. Yeah, eight men, me. It's, yeah. Eight. So I'll what I'll do um, oh, is that I'll try to almost like put my foot on the post. So the post is on the ground. Put one of my feet on the post for that extra leverage, and then yep. sort of like grab the horseshoe with both hands. And he doesn't want to fail at this, so he's going to yank it as hard as he physically can. He's not going to test the waters or anything. He's just going to grab it and go uh, as hard oh. as he can. Okay. Um, right, so you can give me a brawn roll. 85 out of 95. Okay, that's a pretty good roll. Um, I'm going to oppose that with um, a roll of my own. Screen. So, uh, where are we? In... Okay, so I get an 87, <laughs> you got an 85. My role is also a success and it's higher than yours. Yeah. So, no, no, no amount of pushing, pulling, heaving, leverage makes that horseshoe shift. You know, normally I'd, you would have been able to. to to pull something this is it, it it's thermodynamically coupled to the wood yeah at a molecular level by the sounds of it it just will not move whatsoever damn um, you gorilla glue, glue. I, I sort of like uh, look at it yeah and, and no sort, more nails uh, sort of like look look at it and then um he, he's he's quite flabbergasted that he hasn't been able to pull this off and just sort of like um says it's stuck. Don't don't feel bad, Surfy. Don't feel bad. It, we all have our faults, and maybe you're not <laughs> as strong as so you thought. You know what? You know what? We we should go talk to Mr. Magic Man, Mandel. Mandel he, says, he says, "I'm not upset or anything." Oh, just, it's okay. You shouldn't be stuck. Do you want to have a go? Um. He sort of like steps back. He says, uh, "Well, I'm." A little tired from from doing the juggling and and the guy who that guy it's just really in my mind that guy who didn't it's because you were upstaging me of course is why people didn't think it was as well, amusing out there but I think, yeah, i'm, I'm kind of tired from that so l let's just go talk to mandelbrot maybe he knows something about this this mystery uh, did, did you have another one of those poems you wanted to want to read while we walk why, why don't you read one of those for uh, uh, oh he says 
he sort of like looks at the because he sort of like picks this post back up again and, and almost like puts it over one shoulder so he can sort of like hold it with one arm sort of like Dre to, to sort of like balance yeah. it out and he's sort of like, like Schwarzenegger in the Terminator uh, yeah uh, and he's, uh, in, in uh, the commando he yeah. sort of like takes out the book and sort of like tries to sort of like flip through and he comes up and he says uh, 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 right um um I long to see you here at night you're to see your starry eyes I know that there is love within my heart does not tell me lies very good <laughs> guess what I've been so doing all dirt. week <laughs> <laughs> that bumper book of romantic I've points. just got rhyming couplets <laughs> written down and then <laughs> Okay, you uh, you you find Mandelbrot um, uh, in <laughs> sobbing over the loss of the last of his coins. Uh, Can I just say, my, my... His, his fiddle playing itself a bit like a strangled cat. When, when you said you took out your bow, Mandelbrot, really? I thought you were going to shoot the boy. As he... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish. <laughs> my friends, my friends, nice to see you, Basquiel. Sifra, wh- why are you carrying a post? Well, Magic Man, we got a we got a little bit of a riddle that I thought you might have a solution for. Uh, can you believe this? Surfy here can't can't even take a this this horseshoe off this post I saw, and amazing the wrong way on. I thought maybe <laughs> you had some 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 insight, if you will, Mister, because you're the knower of many well, many things. I know many many things. Yes, uh, there, there are things that I know that I don't know. So surely yes. you have the answer to this. I, well, I'd like to think so. But maybe you could help me with the conundrum as well. I I, I was clearly entertaining the people of this, this, this lovely little place. Say if I just and rolls this plank, this uh, post in between them both, and it's just like a boom. And so it sort of like lands in between you as you're sort of like busy talking. It's a boom. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Sir Frog, it's a very nice post. I've already told you, my friend, it's lovely. Uh, but anyway, um, this, this, I, 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 was, I was doing my little coins and dancing, and this, this little rascal ran off with my coins. Okay, so, uh, let, let me just pause you there, Mandelbrot. As this post thuds down <laughs> into the ground between you, would you give me an, an insight roll, please? I certainly shall. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I, I, I'm going to use a point of luck to revert. It's 70 out of 30. But I've okay. used my last point of luck to reverse that because... Oh, I'm... dear, how sad. Never mind. I know. Uh, All so right. be a seven out of thirty, please. Okay, so you've uh, you, you've succeeded. The um, your your magic sense is is tingling. The the hairs on your arms are suddenly standing on end. You can feel a distinct energy coming off the horseshoe and the gatepost. Um, there is definitely some kind of spell that's been used to secure said horseshoe to said gatepost, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, uh, Mandelbrot would know that this is upside down is bad luck. Absolutely. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh um, yeah, that too. The, the, my, my friends, I'll, I'll get back to you, um, uh, school about my problem in a moment. But but this, who would put a horse upside down? It's you will never pull it away from from the post because it, it's magically attached to it. You, you might as well tear your arm away from your body than then, then pull this uh, this horseshoe away from this post. It's, it's there for good. I mean, maybe. You hear that, Surfy? It's, it's not your fault. You really need to stop feeling bad about yourself. You are strong. Mm, you, should, you should be a, a, in awe of the power of, of magic. Yeah. Really. And Basco Clearly. says you are strong. He just says, very. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, maybe if you put the post in the ground the other way up, it might reverse things. You, you never know. These things have been known to happen. Uh, reverse Take things. Post around, put the bit, and hey, presto, it's all good luck to everybody else. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's that's probably why that guy just looked at me like 
yeah, it's probably that. That's a, that's a good idea. But um, I mean, Surfy told the marshal that he liked the post, so it might feel a little weird to give it back now. You know, who knows stuff about legal stuff, maybe. Hmm. Uh, the guy I'm keeps sure calling him sir. I'm sure they'd, they'd be quite happy to have their gatepost back. Well, I don't really care if they want it back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not my concern. Um, my concern is, shouldn't we be doing something for our madam right now? Well, this this as much is true because we, we're, you, you 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 have the afternoon and evening to yourselves. Tomorrow morning is when uh, when everything sort of starts for the fair, and uh, tonight's a night of revelry and uh, people letting loose and uh, sort of settling in. Tomorrow will be the games and uh, the festivities, and that's when you'll be expected to perform. So you've got this evening to kind of knock around and do whatever you like. As as the two, cool. as the two of them are sort of like busy talking, I, I'm just going to um, start looking around because. I just want to check whether or not my my latest love is anywhere about. Oh, uh, she was at the cottage, um, sort of t tending. She uh, the, the, in in with the um, with the price that Madame Nenever has uh, has negotiated for the use of her visit. That she's preparing an evening meal, so she was sort of getting things ready for all of that. Um, but I think you can give me a D twelve roll, please, Ian. Mm. Eight. Okay. All right. Um, as you're sort of casting your eye around the, the field where the, uh, the, the the games are going on, you can see there's a sort of looking in the distance to where Renya's cottage is, which sort of backs onto it a distance away. Um, you can see that there's a sort of group of people um, away from everybody else, away from the main crowd, and they seem to be performing some kind of ritual dance. Um, there's a lot of jumping around going on, uh, lots of high stepping, panting them in a rhythmic fashion, um, some kind of chant. And at the end, these, these chaps gathering a circle, bend low at the waist, stretch out their arms so that all their fingers touch in the middle, um, and then straighten in unison and cry, hi, 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 and do a little step in motion. Um, and then they all sort of look around furtively and split and go their separate ways. Has Seyfard seen anything like this before? Never. He, he looks um, uh, quite um, puzzled about it all, but he, he's not too sure what to make of it. And um, were, were they part of our troop or were they... No, de de definitely not. They're, they're certainly villagers from around here. Right. Or certainly vill villagers. They're not uh, part of the... Uh, uh, of the swarm that's descended on Low Dudgeon. Uh, he probably turned to um, Baskell and sort of like say, there are some very strange people in this place. You're not wrong, Surfy. Uh, there's somebody here who knows of magic. They have somebody like, like Mandelbrot. And that means they might be able to catch on to our money-making endeavors. You know, when we were at that place earlier, and we saw those that strange dance that they were doing, ringing little bells and stuff, and it was just sort of like some sort of thing. I think I've With just I think I've just seen something happen like that here. Well, that would have been better if they juggled the bells, but. Yeah, I, I try and glance around to see. Yeah, because uh, Bastel's sort of diminished. Uh, they, they, they've they've all sort of split up and gone their separate ways by now. It was mighty yeah. no, strange. No, definitely no bells involved with this. Lots of chanting and huffing and puffing. No, no bells this time. This no props at all. No, a lot of weird chanting and panting. Oh. He says, and he mm -hmm. takes out his book and writes down, chanting slash panting. <laughs> How are you going to work chanting and panting into a love poem? Do not answer! <laughs> 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 See, yeah, um, 
Um, you have been taken to, or rather, you have tagged along with the uh, the, the donkey jousters who have uh, repaired to the tavern to drown their sorrows and get to know their, their new uh, champion jouster uh, a little bit better. Of course, the first round is on you, and you rapidly find that nobody has quite enough money to stand their own rounds, so uh, the second and third rounds appear to be on you as well. Yes, well... Um... In the spirit of things, um, I'll stand the first round, and then and then we can. Oh, very generous of you. Yeah, and everybody orders the most expensive um, pitcher of ale. That's uh, that, actually it's the local cider that they're they're after, and uh, that, that's that's brought over and um, quaffed very very quickly because it's thirsty work, donkey jousting. And mm. the second one is ordered. Uh, oh, you don't you don't mind, David? No, well, thank jolly good. It's a bit of a tradition. I see. Okay. And they, they they graciously allow you to to buy a couple <laughs> of rounds of of, of drinks, um, while you're sort of chatting and uh, they're getting to know a little bit about you and you're getting to know their names and uh, somebody sort of pushes through the crowd. The, the tavern is quite full by now. It's an early evening. People are sort of settled in and they've all descended on the taverns. Uh, food has been served and uh, the the cider and the ale and the wine is flowing. Um, there's a couple of people pushing through the crowd towards your table. Um, one is a a tall, thin man with uh, a very, very bad Brian, Brian Clough style comb over. And by his side is um, equally thin, but uh, somewhat shorter, uh, rather stentorian looking woman with a severe sort of top knot um and uh, a, a green shawl around her shoulders um they they know the low dudgeon jousting team because they they hail each other and uh, the the man is introduced as Beldwain and the woman that's with him is Shaylet. a certain amount of deference is being accorded to them a room is made at the table uh they they sit down they graciously accept the offer of drinks that you'll be paying for but which is made by other people um, and um, they inquire about the, they, they've heard about the accident, of course, and uh, how this, this, this noble fellow here is a real life knight and he stepped in to save the day. We will surely win this year. The games are as good as ours. And people sort of look at their cups and don't really say anything. Beldwain turns to you and says, ah, jolly good. You, you, so you, you're a knight, are you? Yes, I am. Jolly good, jolly good. And uh, you're uh, so you're going to help us win the games, eh? Well, of course, I'll, I'll, I'll give it my absolute best. I mean, I'm better with a bow, but uh, I'm pretty, pretty really. Okay. I say, how fascinating. Yeah, I say, aren't you with um, with that that big chappy, eh? the one that's been carrying our gate post? <laughs> <laughs> well, there is a there is a tool. Muscle man in 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 the festive That's fellows, the but I don't know about carrying gate posts. Yes, yes, I need to have a word with him about them. I'd rather like it back, you'll see. You can't can't secure the gate. Uh, anyway, right. anyway, yes, and um and yes, and the juggler fellow. Yes, you, you, and, and I think there's 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 a magician too. Yes, there is, and and there's a fortune teller. Jolly good, jolly good. We were wondering. Um, sort of looks around furtively. Uh sort of cranes his head up to make sure that nobody's eavesdropping. Of course, everybody's sort of craning in to listen. How do you and your uh, your chums uh, feel about making a little bit of extra coin? Well, depend, it depends on, on what you're asking us to do, but, uh, oh, but coin is always welcome. A tiny, tiny matter of uh, of, uh, of of considerable significance and importance to the uh, the esteem of low dungeon, actually. I see. So, a somewhat delicate matter, is it then? Very, very delicate. There aren't any of those high dungeon bastards listening in there. No, no. I mean, he seems quite uh, quite satisfied that no one from high dungeon is eavesdropping. And he explains that uh, this is the 10th year that High Dudgeon has won these games, which obviously you, you already know. It's been a hot topic of conversation with the donkey jousters. They're cheating, you know. We just can't cheating. prove it. The bastards, yes. They're cheating. Yeah. We know that there's magic involved, you know. Magic of a vile, sorcerous nature. And it's strictly against the rules, but we just can't prove it. Now, 
if someone were to be able to prove that high dudgeon has got to the employ of a magician or a sorcerer or someone one of those magic types and is using it to win everything which they are therefore they're cheating and we could have them disqualified and we would be victorious and what's more they'd be scared to do it ever again and then things can be back to how they used to be when when we sort of won on fair and equal terms oh yes well it does sound like a, a rather dastardly thing for of course they the won't let us get do. anywhere near them so it has to be someone from outside the village as it were yes well uh, i'll have a i'll have a word with my fellow fellows and um we've got a magician of some repute in our in our party so uh, we'll have a chat have you with him. Yes. oh well there they are you'll see at, at a clear advantage already i can see that we'll have this matter resolved in in a matter of days yes well we'll we'll, we'll see what we can do of course and we're, we're willing to pay there's oh, well. a there's a 20 florins each in it for you he says quite proudly. That seems that seems very fair. For, give for me give me an affluence roll, please. Oh, Where is what, now? Affluence is on your it? it's on your character. It's not one of the skills. It's uh, listed to one side. Uh, let's see, let's Hang on. I was wondering how to add that to the character sheet because I have one of those as well. Yes, you've all got an affluence roll. It's used to. You don't have to track money. In this okay. if you're going to buy anything of expense you roll affluence and if it's a success you get it if you okay. fail you don't have the funds but i'm going to use it slightly differently here that's all right Very um, interesting because i've not added it to my sheet um i'll roll a 1d 100 and i uh, i will tell you what your affluence is i've got it's, your sheet uh, i think yep it. yep so i'll roll a 1d 100 and i'm looking for a 48 or better 34 34. Okay, uh, 20 florins for such an... If this is as important as they say, that's a bloody miserable sum to be offering. It's almost an insult. Mind you, it's 20 more than you've currently got. That's very true, and and 20 more that I was definitely less off because of all the, the drinks that I've been buying. Um, Indeed, yeah. Well, I mean, we'll happily do it, but um, as it's so important to you, 20 florins is a bit, well, put it this way, the big chap wouldn't even get out of bed for less than 30. Shaylet, the uh, the woman that's uh, with Beldwain, sort of nudges him and uh, makes a meaningful scowling glance and says, well, we, we might be prepared to advance it to 25, I suppose. Oh, I don't know. Well, I mean, we have a, a very unique set of skills between us. Um, and of course, I mentioned we've got that, uh, the, the magician fellow who's yes. uh, of you, some you, repute. Don't um, forget the wizard, Shaylet. Don't forget the wizard. And, <laughs> and they have certain costs involved to, to do wizards. Costs? Uh, Is it? So, say 30? Done. So full on, Florence? Let's shake on it. Says Beldwain, spits on his hand and proffers it. He'll. So Jedney will will hesitate a little bit and then shake the hand and then, sort of, when they're not looking, he'll sort of like wipe his hand on the bench, because it's uh, okay. a bit dirty. All um, right. It's a bit, but he doesn't want to rub it off in his jacket either. No, 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 no. It would be be impolite. And the uh, the the two elders of Low Dudgeon are, are are overjoyed that they have managed to secure your services, and they're quite happy to pay half of this in advance. So, you've agreed forty. That's hundred and twenty. A, um, a a small pouch containing sixty florins is uh, is passed across the table to you. But of course, you must say nothing to High Dudgeon. This this oh, not, not not a word. Terribly secret. Not a, not a word will be uttered by myself. The one condition is that you do need to prove that they're cheating before the very last game. Obviously, the sooner the better. Yes. But so the games have to be underway, and by the, the the third day, may well be too late. Okay. And of course, they may win, but they they are convinced that cheating and foul plays afoot. That's fine. 
we'll 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 get to the bottom of of, of their cheating ways. It's, this is a wrong that cannot go unanswered. And then Sir Jedney will um, say, "I shall bid you good evening. I shall need to find my fellow festive fellows to talk about this." And he'll get up, bow, and then make his way to to try and find everyone. If he can't find them on the way to the from the pub, he'll go back to the cottage. Okay, so uh, the uh, the other three, where are you going after uh, uh, well, playing playing around with the gateposts and so forth? M M Mandibolts um, suggest about we'll, we'll, we'll turn the gatepost upside down, but, but more importantly, who would put this horseshoe this way? It's clearly a fix by magic, but why would they do such a thing? Um, Basquiel, my friend, it, it's it's obscure to say the least. Well, as you know, uh, some of the towns you don't really want to be a, a magician in. Um, remember that one, the one place that turned us out, like day one. They did I, not like your dancing coins. At, I know. They loved my juggling, obviously, but your coins were why we got kicked out of that town. Well, um, no, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure. No, no, they, they quite love my, no, maybe not. Who knows? People are fickle. That's all I will say, but you've got to see the funny side of things all the time. But yes, it, it's... Why would somebody wish bad luck on this town or on this festival? That's why that, that post was put there, or why that horseshoe was put there. And so, yes, it's one thing we need to find out. Who put it there? Yeah, what, I what? think you should be right on that, because while I'm doing my act, I don't, don't want to be interrupted by a, a magician, well, obviously, upstaging me or, or ruining things, well, uh, uh, making exactly. it so, I don't know they can make my the, the cat stick to my hand that's going to ruin the entire uh, the act i, I uh, know what if one of your your rats eat your cats that's already happened you know that's a soft <laughs> sorry for me yeah that's <laughs> more special sorry. um that's why i have two cages now um ah uh, yes i remember this so well that was my favorite cat too. And anyways I, th I think we should get ready uh to go to the tavern so we can make a little bit of first day money and so yes. you can find the magician and solve that mystery for, for all of us uh is surfy are you, you good with uh coming to the, the tavern yeah he says he goes i'm all right with unlucky things by the way they, right they don't worry me don't worry me at all yeah no, you're, have, you're fine i have something that's quite lucky actually do you want to well, do you want to see it <laughs> i'm uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say yes. And I'm trusting you this time. Cause last time I didn't want to see it. He sort of puts yeah, his puts his hand down the the front of his breeches, no! fumbles around a bit, and then <laughs> pulls out what can only be described as a, what appears to be um, a rabbit's foot. He says, oh, "That's much better." He says, "This is my lucky mat rabbit foot." I, 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 I'm sure my, my, my large friend that... Um, I like to keep it that safe. That rabbit's foot is very lucky. Yes. It's going to bring me luck, I tell you. I just know it, and he just sort of like fondles it in his hand. I just <laughs> I just know he's she's going to fall for me this time. Not if she finds that... No. Uh, perhaps maybe, my, my, my large friend, you should um, wash it occasionally. But that will lose its luckiness. No. It has to Whoever be. Whoever told you such a thing? The, the 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 person I bought it of, for said I had to keep it warm, and not wash it. M really? Was he a magician? Maybe. Though? No, I don't believe. I think he what was the... a a rabbit foot seller. Yeah, because yeah. Mandelbrot here is a magician, so yes, I feel I, like. I would suggest maybe. Putting some lavender in some water, maybe bring it to to heat a little bit, and, and pop the rabbit foot in there, and you'd be surprised if what it will bring your prowess, and get rid of the smell. I bet the ladies would love that. Mm. I thought only ladies love that smelly stuff. Yeah, well, you are going after a lady. You know what? We should take this conversation to the tavern while I yeah. make money, and Mandelbrot looks for the 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 person who's trying to ruin my act and and you can be associated with us and you know who would love to to run into to you at the the tavern the lady on the hill <gasps> well, she might be was she going to the tavern she might 
And it would be really, really cool if, if I was doing my act there and you would just happen to be there. She'd be like, oh, oh Surfod, the, the mighty, oh, wow. is is protecting his friends. Let, let's, let's, let's walk and talk. How about we walk and talk? You, uh, you walk and talk in the direction of the, of the tower. Don't forget your post. Um, yeah, where are you going to put the post? Yeah, it's... I, I'm just going to sort of like, unless... I, I'll just sort of say, do you want that? Bring it with us, my friend, and, and we can put it back where it was, but the other way around. Maybe break the the part off so that we we have the the horseshoe that we can that you could use to hit the magician if they meddle in my act, <gasps> and make it a little bit more manageable for to get through doors. Maybe he says, he says, the horseshoe is stuck on by magic. No great feat of strength will actually pull it off. It's I can verify. It's either all the post or not the post. What if you, can you break the wood around? No. So that we have just a chunk of wood that's less of a, uh, yeah, it's, 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 you're probably not strong enough. Let's let's keep walking. Just, just, just bring the whole post and we'll put it back where it was. Everyone's happy. The the, 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 the guards are happy. The the, the, the the chappy in charge is happy. We're all happy. Just put, the, put, uh, put it the other way around when it goes in the so, say far, do a sort of like, oh, so that rhymes. he says, say far, he says, yeah, no poetry like that. That's my job. He sort of like says, <laughs> I, I'll take, I'll take the post back and I'll meet you at the tavern. Good idea. All right. So you, you deposit the post in the post hole the other way up so that the horseshoe is now facing with its prongs towards yeah. the sky. I, I just want to pick and I want to pick some things up before I go to the tavern, um, just from my personal luggage. But I'll tell you what they are once I get to the. <laughs> I think I've got an idea, but okay. So you're you're heading back to 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 get some stuff. Uh, you will of course bump into see Edney, who is who is leaving the tavern post haste, and is on his way to you. So the four of you are back together, just as uh, Sefford is peeling off to, to, to go and get whatever it is from his luggage. Oh, my friends, I'm glad I caught you. I have secured us employment whilst we're here at the fair. Additional employment? Additional employment. And then he will heft the purse of, of 60 florins and say, there's twice Orange. of what's in here. And then he'll carefully put it back and say, and then he'll look round because he doesn't know what anyone from High Dungeon look like, looks like, but he'll look round anyway and then say, High Dungeon are cheating. Cheating? Shh, shh. shh. People voice. are looking round. <laughs> Lower your voice, Sefford. Cheating? We've been, we've been asked to look into, look into a certain delicate matter. High Dungeon have uh, employed a wizard to... And then he'll pause and look round again and then look back and then say, to fix the games. Well, really? can, can I ask, in this setting, what? how is mm. magic, is it acceptable? Is it frowned upon? If it, is it something that people know? Oh, magic! Magic's uh, it's well known to be to be practiced. Um, the, the the various kings and nobles and dukes will go to great lengths to secure the employment of magicians because there aren't really that many. Right. Um, the ma magic is forbidden, not by anybody, but the magicians themselves. Um, magic is uh, strictly controlled by a. Um, a thing called Mergen's Edict. And Mergen is one of the, the, the archmages of the Elder Isles, and he stipulated on pain of death that if magic is being used to meddle in mortal affairs, then the wizard that has uh, transgressed the edict shall perish. And there are all sorts of horrible tales of, uh, of wizards that have done that being turned into gateposts. Post. Yes. Uh, me <laughs> into metal posts. Post, yeah. uh, yeah, the wizard Sartsnack, um, another one that was a, the wizard Twitten. Um, he, he, he was turned into an iron post that was nailed into the middle of a crossroads. And that's where the Goblin Fair takes place oh, at, yeah. at Midsummer, funnily Which enough. Yeah. Whitten's Cross, yeah. So yes, the, the bad things can happen from magicians that use their magic for ill purposes, but that's not what this is. Yeah. 
it's you know casting a few cantrips to make coins dance that's got nothing to do with it but uh ooh, maybe fixing the games yeah. that's uh yeah so, so that's far to say I, I don't think that sounds too good no it's a wrong it's definitely wrong it shouldn't be it shouldn't be to be doing it's that. A wrong that needs writing it is mm, it certainly explains this uh this horse you've been turned the wrong way around on this post on the entrance to to the meadows my friends I, I, we're well on the way if, if someone has put it we need to find out who put it there and then mm. we can get our 120 silver florins another 120 <laughs> silver florins <laughs> <laughs> the the band that's been setting up and practicing over in uh, Midsummer Meadow has ju just played that da 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 chord. <laughs> <laughs> when um, yep. just how just out of interest, uh, Lars, how how do you play the idea that players might be able to fit things together, but characters may not at this point? So is um, I think that depends on on how you start fitting things together and exchange that information. Right. Okay. I'm not. I think to... <laughs> that the the magician who is trying to ruin my act might know who the magician is that's trying to fix these games. Um, I, I I pass on the information of, of getting knocked down and finding that post and and getting. Surfy to, to try and break it and we don't have it now of course but uh, so what, what did think the, they what did the horseshoe mean then um the horseshoe being be turned upside down it it's it's quite it, it, it's quite bad in a sense because it it, it brings bad luck to this to, it, it, rather than collecting good luck it, it, it releases and that and that's what the uh the Donkey drafting team have said that they've been really unlucky for the last ten years. They've they've not won in all the in that whole decade any of the events of Low Dudgeon. Sure. They've lost everything, and High Dudgeon have won everything, and that's why they think they're cheating. And so that's what you're... we've been asked to find out. But they've said specifically that there was they believe that High Dudgeon have employed mm. the services of a magician to oh. uh, directly infect, affect the get the outcome of the game. So perhaps this this magician has put the the horseshoe on the we fence post. To, we need to watch out for anything strange happening. If anything strange has happened, please do tell. Will there yes. be will well, there be more Mandel of these? Will there be more of these upside down horseshoes then? Who knows? Maybe maybe we should check every post, but maybe not. I I don't. Um, could I make um, a folklore? Well, could, would I know that? You, you can you can definitely make a folklore role. Yes. And um, that's a 67 out of 75. Okay, right. So a number of things have suddenly begun to coalesce in Mandelbrot's mind as you're cogitating this, as you're thinking about it. And the very fact that your your magical sense is, is sort of been tingling around the, the horseshoe. Uh, first of all, um, if there is some sort of foul play around it, it, it's doubtful there'll be just one horseshoe you would imagine there will be others. So maybe the idea of looking for more horseshoes is a good idea. Where they'll be, who knows? You don't know of anything that would suggest there would, there would necessarily be a pattern. Um, but the other thing you've just remembered is that, that that little chap that ran off with all your money earlier, he'd said something about Tamurello being present in High Dudgeon not that long ago. So suddenly it's all beginning to kind of fit. High Dudgeon, Tamurella, a wizard who is not just a wizard but an archmage mm. and known to be battling Mergen. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes, indeed. None of the others know who the hell Tamurella is. No, but, no, uh, no. No. You or do. Mergen. Yes, I do. Yes. Or Mergen. Um, uh, my friends, um, the, 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 the rascal that stole my coins from my little dancing entertainment that I was doing earlier, he, he did tell me that um, a magician of mighty arts was in High Dungeon. And that's Tom Urello. You, you, you may not have heard of his name, but he's a mighty wizard, a magician, sorry. He, um, he can do amazing things from what I've heard. And he's, he's somebody I would love to learn from, but he could be a bit of a trickster from what I've heard as well. So maybe 
maybe he's involved in this. If so, we need to be wary. But maybe we also need to find evidence that he's directly this, manipulating. This is so things. very true. Mm. And yes, well, let us. If, if there is one horseshoe here, there may be many around. So do keep your eyes open and keep your eyes open also for any strange things going on. Yes, but we need to do it soon mm. because. If, if it gets to the end of the fair and we haven't proved it, we, we won't get the silver and we won't f fix the wrong because we, we've got ideally two days to do it and the third days hopefully will be be fixed by. We are a wonderful group of people, so we, we've got no problem here. We shall solve this mystery. I'm oh, sure we will. Right. We have the correct people here. I we could. Have brawn, we have brains, we have... Me? I, I can pull horseshoes off i'm sure you can but keep that to yourself in future if we find any i can try mandelbrot you said keep our eye out for weird stuff strange um, stuff yeah strange yes. stuff and uh, yes. surfy saw this weird dance um <laughs> going on um i don't know if that qualifies as as strange what like like a, like a druid's dance or just like a um a happy dance? Well, what was happening? Well, they, they seemed to be in a circle and there was a whole load of dancing and chanting. And chanting? They, they, they almost like looked as if they were bending over at one point. They were all facing Ooh. each other. Certainly sounds like a ritual of some kind, Ooh. but you don't know of any ritual specifically that demands bending over high steps and waggling of fingers like that. That sounds very strange. Something does. Did you do you recognise any of the people? Or would you recognise me if you saw them again? Oh, of course you would. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I've got Wonderful. keen eyesight. Wonderful. What we shall do, in my, in my eyes, is keep an eye out for these people. If you see them, quietly point them out to one of us, and maybe we can see if they're mingling with other people of the same group. And then hopefully what we can maybe eavesdrop and hear what they're saying or find out what's going on. We could maybe bring one back to the tents. Okay. Now, um, Surfer, did you say you were going to go and grab something from your, your luggage? Yeah, um, because if we're going to the tavern, um, somebody mentioned, I forget what it was, that the, the lovely lady might be there. And she might be, um, Renya is her name, or Rena. And Renya. Renya will be there. And so I want to go prepared. You know, okay. I, I want to look my best. So I'll um, discard my... Um, overshirt and amply apply yeah, li liberally uh, apply the oil okay. yeah um, so when, when I actually walk in you know I, I'm banking on this that she's going to be further impressed with my um, upper body strength well um, as you head back to the cottage which is where all your stuff is stored mm. uh, Renya is actually in the garden. Um, she's not gone down to the tavern. Um, she's kind of standing at, at the cottage door, looking out you know, around for you lot because she's got an evening meal prepared and ready. Um, she's in the doorway of the cottage, uh, sort of gazing around. There's, there's climbing roses all around the trellis of the cottage door. She is a vision of perfect beauty. You, the, the future Mrs. Surford the Mighty, clearly. Uh, the love of your life, the one who holds the key to your heart. Um, you may make a perception roll, augmented quite liberally by your fall in love easily roll, which will give you plus 16. Plus 16. I, I also want to, I got a courtesy skill as well. So if I'm going to be introducing myself, if possible, I might want to incorporate that. But yeah, that sounds good. Um um, sorry, um, perception, um, adding on 16, did you say? You're going to add 16, so that's going to be 49 or less. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's good to roll. 49 or less. I got 81. 
81. Okay. <laughs> So the the vision of loveliness is is standing in the uh, in the doorway. Uh, she smiles at you as, as she sees you approaching. She, ah, um, I, I have some some food ready if if you want to come and eat. Uh, Madame Nenever is is already started. Um, please do, do call the do call the others. I don't suppose that are, are they out drinking perhaps. Uh, yeah, yeah, they uh, uh, they they are around, fair, fair uh, lady. Why have you got that funny colour? Um, uh, it, it, it it's it's the heat. Okay. Oh well, well, uh, round them up and, and and do come in. The table's laid. Uh, maybe maybe uh I. I would like to just say that you you are uh, you are um very very, yeah, very... No, no, oh, okay yeah maybe later and she turns and goes back inside the cottage uh, Zephyr would go and sort of like uh, head back to round up the party um, to bring them back for their meal all right um so you've been invited back to Renya's for an evening meal that she's prepared with her own fair hand. Um, it, 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 it does mean that you don't have to fork out any money for food this evening, which and, and it's got to be better than uh, than Bastille's cooking as well, because <laughs> Bastille's cooking usually involves using up the stuff that that got maimed or mangled during his yeah. practice bout. Yeah. Exactly. If there's one less cat, we know. We yeah. Have... yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and although rat can be improved with certain herbs and spices, it's still always rat. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, so, yes, this sounds infinitely more appetizing. Uh, right, so the other three of you, um, I would like from you perception rolls, just as we've had a perception roll from uh, Inmills. So, um, for uh, Sayedni, you can augment your perception roll with um let me see uh you can augment with insight please which uh will give you uh let's see that's plus that, that'll give you plus 10 to your perception roll that'd be a regular perception for me yeah uh, let's just say yetney first uh no 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 each of you is going to get to augment so we'll do see yetney first Um, so I got an 11 on a 49. Okay, so that's a success. That's good. Uh, right, we'll do Bascule now. And Bascule, you can augment your perception roll with uh, your crush on Madame Nenaba. You're very Ooh. eager to go back. <laughs> She's going back and she, she's eating. At the awesome. fair, fair maiden Renya's thing. You're, you're eager to get in there and uh, make a good impression. Let's see. Uh, um... 75 would give me a um, plus 16. Plus 16? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's some good perception for her. 55 of 82. Okay, that's a success. So that's uh, two successes. And finally, Mandelbrot, um, you can give me a perception augmented by your fairy magic, uh, which is 44. So that's plus 10. That's Plus 10, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, right, okay. Da, 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 perception. Temporary turn. Oh, no. I got a 54 out of 52. <laughs> 54 out of 52. Okay, right. So the following things happen. Um, you are heading back um, up the garden path to Renu's cottage to, to, to go and eat. Um, Mandelbrot, as you are sort of ducking into into that, your your magical sense, your magical sensitivity is 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 triggering. You can feel something quite strong around the cottage. Um, so Yedney and Bascule, you probably see at exactly the same time as you're you're sort of making way for for Mandelbrot to go in. Um, 
above the lintel for the doorway going into the cottage, obscured by the, the climbing roses that are attached to the trellis, there is a horseshoe. Prongs pointing down towards the ground. Another one. Hmm. Hmm. Is that, that's like the one you found on the post, isn't it? It does look just like that. And the other one was obscured as well. I wonder if the magician knew that a famous juggler as myself would be coming here. <laughs> I don't hmm. Well. Uh, sure magicians can that. see a lot of things. They, that's probably if they don't want me to. Uh, but if it's stuck, you think that. I don't think Surfy's going to try and rip that off the house of his beloved. No, <laughs> he, he, he might take half the wall, yes. Yeah. Um, or... Well, you're strong, right? Maybe, maybe you would uh, be able to. to, to hey, get... oh, I'm, I'm well, <laughs> give it a go. I'm, I'm not strong at all. Yeah, you've just got a... good aim. No, you're not, yes, you don't yeah. have too many I, muscles. I could, I could shoot an arrow at it and. Yeah, you think that all the archery. Right away. Yeah. Make your arm a little stronger, but. Well, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get surfed for, for that. No, let's let's go in. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. So, um, a trestle table has been set up in the uh, the parlor of uh, of Renya's kitchen. There's uh, enough room for for lots of people to sort of gather around there. There's a a fine meal of of stew, fresh vegetables. Um, pickles, really good bread, local cheese. Um, it, it's a fine feast that she's kind of put on. Um, she she serves each of you a, a good dollop of the stew and uh, then the, the, the vegetables are passed around for people to help themselves. And uh, there's a jolly old atmosphere around the, the table. People talking and laughing and sort of get, getting on with things. Um, Renya is very quiet throughout all of this. She answers any questions if she's asked, but she's she's quite reserved. Um, there's there's a, a bit of a sadness about her actually. Uh, she's she, although she is being very very hospitable. There's certainly something that seems as though her spirit's been crushed at some point, and she certainly doesn't go to the tavern if anybody asks around that. She that that's somewhere she avoids. Uh, after taking a, a nice bite of a. Of a pickle in that delicious crunch uh askill would, would ask her kind of offhand uh, so how long you had that horseshoe above the door Ooh. sorry horseshoe I, 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 I don't know what you mean well it's underneath uh the the rose roses and i would have thought uh, you'd have that for a long time she gets up goes to to look at it uh comes back I've never seen that there before I've never noticed it oh huh. that's interesting so you don't know why it's there fixed to the top of your doorway she has absolutely no clue it's the strangest thing why is it? I certainly didn't put it there and I don't think Ronolf put it there and um, with that um I'll stand up, I'll walk to the door, I'll have, I'll have a look, and, and I'm going to assume that my sense is like, oof, it's the same one. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Um, and he'll come back to the table and say, that's, that, that's another one. Um, we, another one? Yes, he did, we found one exactly the same on the, on the post to the gate to the meadows, upside down like yours, the wrong way round. That's um, very strange. It is very strange. Um, has there somebody been to your house recently that um, you know, do any work or anything, or or, or somebody you had you don't know, haven't recognised, or? Well, she sort of thinks about this, and then she sort of nods and says, "Well, there was Semmons, and he is a blacksmith." Oh, is he local, or is he from? He's high, from high, high Dungeon. He's, he's from High, high Dungeon. dungeon. It does Semence is the high dudgeon blacksmith. Knacker is the low dudgeon blacksmith. Well, pray tell, my love, why, oh, my, my, my lady, why, um, why would Semence come here when you have your own blacksmith? 
Oh, um, he's uh, and she she actually blushes at this and becomes very very coy. Um, oh, yeah. it's, um, yes, he's. Uh, I, I think he's sweet on me. Oh, I understand. Uh, Ian, I will have an immediate roll against your uh, deep love for Renya. Yes. Uh oh. <laughs> As in fall in love easily. Do you want yep. To? Yep. It is now love Renya deeply with all your heart. 39 out of 75. The bastard. She's got other suitors. That's not on. Yeah. And how dare he? He will rue the day, is how you're feeling. Yeah. And he'll probably, um, Sefford would probably push push his chair or the, ban- um, or the bench. I, I, th- I think at, at the sound that somebody has been trying to court Renya, your, your, your hands are gripping the arms of the chair that you're sitting on and splintering them. Yeah, but I I, I want to stand up as quickly as possible. And I didn't know if I... collapse and uh, the whole chair is, is now matchwood. Uh, yeah, him. and you, you can see that I'm getting um, crosser and, and uh, crosser about this idea that there's somebody else um, courting my my fair love. And he, he, he was sort of like, um, make his... He'll stand up if he's fallen down and, and sort of like posture um, and sort of like say, has this man been inappropriate at all? Oh, heavens no, says Renya. No. No, he's, he's, he's a gentleman. A blacksmith? But... Well, yes. And what was he doing at your house? Well, he came to call. He, he brought honey and ah, and that cheese he, you're eating there. He brought you presents. I yes, know. Yes, he did. And she's now quite indignant. Yeah, and this almost like annoys Sephron as well. I know what he's after. Bringing honey. <gasps> Sharp intakes of breath. How dare you suggest... I don't, no! He's a gentleman. You need to be rid of him. There is only one true love. Right. There's a, a look of, of sheer astonishment on uh, Renya's face. Um, let me make a D100 roll here. That's okay. either good or bad. <laughs> That was a willpower roll, um, which she has just failed. Well, if that's how you feel uh, about people that you don't know when you're a guest in my house, I, I think you'd, you'd, you'd jolly well best go and find somewhere else to stay. Yes, I think that'll be best for everybody. Well, uh, Renya, Renya, my lady, I, 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 I'm really sorry, <laughs> but um, almost. Um, he, he just speaks his mind, and sometimes he comes across... Um, more abrupt than he really is. Oh. You are your most hospitable hosts here, and I apologise deeply from the bottom of my heart about what has just happened. He's just more concerned with your well-being and the fact that this this um, horseshoe has just appeared above your door that we are concerned about. Put and there he, by. He's, he's more worried for your safety. He just doesn't know how to articulate it. Okay, I will have. Um, a courtesy roll. You can augment that with your eloquence, I think, Mandelbrot. Oh, thank you. Uh, 59 eloquence is going to be 12. Is that right? Yep. 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 Thank you. (laughs) 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 Oh, for a luck point right now. Um, (laughs) 90 out of 71. Oh dear. Okay, um, th- that is not going to sway her at all. Um, she's she's completely outraged at uh, at what. Seth wanted Seth- to say, "Where is he?" Well, he's in high dudgeon, quite plainly. Um, <laughs> I will I mean, sort this. Seth, from- the, the, the 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 convivial atmosphere that up until this point had everyone had been enjoying has now evaporated in a flash. It's very very uncomfortable. Uh, Renya is uh, she she's she's now ranting about how that all men are the same. You can't trust any of them. 
Why is this happening to her? It's just the same. I think you better leave, all of you. And Seth wanted to say, I'll stop this. He's not good enough for you. Mandelbrot will, 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 will stand up and say, Renya, this could be the workings of the horseshoe that's doing this because it's bringing bad luck onto Renya this house. Rose up her arms, shouts at Sefford, how very dare you! Bursts into floods of tears and runs out of the cottage. Um, she's lifted her skirts and she's running as fast as her, her, her dainty, gorgeous little feet will carry her down the, uh, down the road and out of sight. What would I have to roll to recognise that maybe I've gone too far and I should sort of like pursue her, you know, to try to make amends? What would... Okay, you can give me an opposed roll of your insight versus your uh, your fall in love easily. So my um, insight is 98 out of 29. Right, so you're obviously you don't even need to roll anything else. That's an immediate failure. Yeah, you of course running after her and proclaiming undying love is absolutely the best course of action for you to take right now. Everything will be fine as soon as she sees that. Yeah, and uh, sure, she sort of like um, leaves, and uh, Sephron would just sort of like immediately. Um, turn on his heels and start heading um towards the door almost like calling out a name uh, as he as he goes sort of like come back uh, come back i i didn't mean to upset you and sort of like launches after her it, it sadly falls on deaf ears um she completely ignores you uh i'll she... make it up to her well, she's, she's she's running off down down the path, and she she reaches the crossroads, turns down the side road where the the tavern is, and runs off into the distance. I mean, you can you can pursue her if you wish, um, and she she's going to actually vanish into the sawmill. Uh, there's a, a sawmill. Uh, if we just have a quick look at the uh, at roll twenty um, on this map, the Sawmill is down here in Low Dudgeon. Let me just get my cursor on it, and uh, that yeah. is the sawmill yeah. just there. Uh, so it's quite a big building on the very edge of uh, of the village. Low Dudgeon makes its its living through charcoal burning and lumber. Um, High Dudgeon makes its living through crops and and agriculture. Did she just uh, seem? Did she just seem to randomly run into this place? Or did... oh no 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 she 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 runs to, to to the sawmill quite deliberately. Nothing random about this. Um, bangs on the door. Um, uh, it's opened by a a, a, a large matronly looking woman. Um, there's a gaggle of children around her, and she goes, "Renya, what's the matter?" Sweeps her into her arms. Renya's sobbing, sort of points a finger back towards this big hulking brute that's now running towards her, and uh, Renya is taken inside, and this matronly woman is now standing plumb in front of you with her arms folded and staring at you with the kind of gaze that would fell a charging elephant. Yep. And I, I'm likely to slowly stop and, and okay. come come to a, a halt. Probably. Right. I'm going to roll her combat style of, of fold arms and stare at people. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and you, you can defend against this with your willpower. Um, so I've got a 41. Um, I've got a, a 32 out of 36. 32 out of 36. It's a good roll, but it's not, not as good, good as enough. Well. Yeah. So you, you, you are actually brought up because she is terrifying. She's scowling at you. She's tapping a foot rhythmically. And she's got that, come on, if you think you're hard enough, look about her. Yeah. It's a mother-in-law stir. Yes, that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, everyone uh, uh, father will just sort of like slowly uh, come to a halt and sort of like... Um, it would be a good idea, she says, if you were to turn around and go away quite quickly. Don't you agree? And he, he sort of like goes, uh, 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 and then she's, he sort of like looks at her mm-hmm. eyes as she's just sort of like gazes him down. And she, he just and sort of goes, howls. I'll be back. He, he says and so sort of like oh I'll be waiting uh, turns around and sort of like 
walks off ra rather um, sullen and panting and rather downtrodden. And it's, you, it's as when when you arrive back at the cottage, you are being thoroughly castigated. Um, yeah, this was not how all this was meant to play out. Okay, so um, Renya has fled, uh, deeply insulted and mortified. Um, there is a horseshoe stuck above her her, her own door. You've got a, another horseshoe fastened to a gate post that's the wrong way up, holding the gate there. You've got a problem to solve to prove that there's there's some kind of magic that's influencing High Dungeon. What's your plan of action for the next day? Um, Malga wants to walk around looking for horseshoes. He's um, he, he wants to try and find as many as he can. Um, he's no idea what he can do with them, but if these are affecting the games and bringing bad luck on this area, then that's a good place to start. But also we need to find out who has put these here. And the Smithy, the Smith uh, Sevens is a good place to start. Okay. So Sevens is the, the High Dutch and Blacksmith, which would mean a trip up to High Dutch. And, um, it's, it's a good five miles, which would be a couple of hours walk for you at yeah. uh, and, and yeah, it's getting a bit on, so maybe that that will be one for tomorrow. But you can certainly spend an hour or so this evening, mm -hmm. sort of looking around Low Dudgeon for horseshoes, if you wish. Um, what are the others going to do? I, I would like to also add on that because uh, Matt Baskill knows that so far, two out of two of these horseshoes were fairly well concealed. Um, yeah. So he's going to be trying to help out with that that focus, as well as. And this is actually the primary goal. Is he's secondary, he's helping his friends look for the horseshoes, but he wants to look for uh, the, the guy in the crowd that may have just didn't like his his juggling. Uh, anybody that might have made him feel a little bit um, slighted, you know, but also helping his friend. Okay, all right, that's good. And Siedni, what's uh, Siedni's plan? So Siedni's thinking it's getting a bit late. So he's going to, he'll start first thing in the morning and he'll head to the uh, the donkey jousting lists first thing in the morning to look to see if he can find any horseshoes uh, that are okay. upside down um, on the, uh, probably on the low dudgeon side of the list rather than the high dudgeon side. Um, right. But in the meantime, tonight, he'll uh, make sure that Hollyhock is, is well cared for and she's had her, her feeding um, feed bag. Um, and he will have attempted to try and attack Sheba because Sheba's probably been flying around most of the most okay. of the day. So he'll try and call Sheba back to. Oh no no Sheba's no! You you you, you keep um you keep Sheba hooded. Uh, oh okay. He has a cage. Yeah, she, she, she's a she's a hunting bird. You you don't so, let her. No, yeah, that's you, fine. Um, yeah. So he'll uh, he'll he'll get her out the cage and um, make sure that she's fed for the evening. Okay. Uh, probably so clean the okay. cage out and that's. Sort of thing. On a side note, do these horseshoes have like a maker's mark on them or not? Ah, okay. Are you going to take a close look to see if there's a... If, if possible, yes, at this one above the door. I'll, I'll, I mean, I, I don't know what I'm looking for. I'm going to look for anything that's sort of... Okay. It's going to try to cast his mind back to the last one he saw. If there's anything that matches like the cast marks. Yeah. Okay, right. So you're, you're taking a very, very good look at uh, this horse. You see if there's some kind of maker's mark or, or something on that. Something some that's like, like a, a, a blemish in the cast or anything. I'll tell you what, we will have a formidable customs role for this. Oh, my so life. Your customs. Um, formidable, 37 <laughs> out of 38. It's okay. about time the table changed. So that, that, that's a really good thing to, to, to look for. Okay. Yes, there is a maker's mark on this. Uh, it's a distinct sort of uh, V-shaped sign um, at the kind of the apex of the curve of the right. horseshoe. And because you will, you check the horseshoe on the gatepost exactly the same so these horseshoes and they, they are identical in shape as well mm. and design they are clearly made by the same smith right wonderful um so far dolly good 
Um, I'm going to try to hang out with Baskell uh, and sort of like for general advice because I, I understand he's quite good with the ladies. Um, but I would also like to spend some time in the tavern and see whether or not I can gleam any information about the, the Smiths uh, in both this town and the other. Do, do people talk about them? Is there any reputation about them? Is the Smith okay. here really good? That sort of like thing. So rather, I'm not necessarily questioning. I'm just bringing it up in conversation or listening around when I'm feeling very distraught and damaged in the Absolutely. tavern. I My lucky that. rabbit's foot is about to be it's discarded. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay, so um, what I would like then from Mandelbrot... Right, I'm going to have uh, a set of different roles here. Um, Bascule. I would like a deceit roll from you. Uh, actually, no, perception augmented by deceit. Um, you're going looking for horseshoes. Where would you put something if you wanted to hide it quite well? So we'll have a deceit augmented perception roll from you, please. Uh, let's see, deceit is 72, so that'd be a 15. Um, and add that to my perception. Makes it an 81 and 75 of 81. Okay, so we get the success on that. Uh, Mandelbrot, I will have a perception roll augmented by, um, I think, your fairy magic. So, yeah, so that Actually, was. No, scrap, scrap that. No, your customs. Customs, right. So. Let's get 15. Actually, it'll be 16, because your customs is 75. That's right, sorry, yeah. There we go. Come on. I'm not clicking you again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm definitely not going to click you again. I'll, click, I'll, I'll do it again. You're going to have to click it again now. Oh! I was going to do it twice now. Um, I got a 43 out of 58. Well done. That's a success. Excellent. Okay. So we've got successes there. Um, so, Yedney, uh, from you, I would like a... Let me just call up your character sheet so I can cause maximum damage. I mean, <laughs> find the, the absolute best role for you. Um, you two will be making me a perception role. Now, you said that you were getting Hollyhock and, and Sheba sort of yes. settled down for the night so you can augment your um i think we're going to have uh you can augment your perception role with your meticulously groomed dependency <laughs> because you, you're very fastidious about this you, you you're checking over every single detail I'll give you plus 12 to your plus perception 12. i have to say that names of passions and combat styles are the best in this game it's <laughs> fantastic isn't it yeah yeah uh that's a 49 out of 51. oh can so i just let got... you all know when it comes to me things are going to go downhill <laughs> i'm not i'm not okay, i'm really well, not well, used well. to getting perception rolls either so i'm very happy to <laughs> <say that. laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So, Ian, you you are yeah, you've gone to the tavern to drown your sorrows and try and find out what you can about the the two blacksmiths. Mm. Uh, right. So, what we will have from uh, from Sefford is we will have a streetwise role, please, and we will augment that with your research. So, you've got research at fifty nine. So, that's going to give you plus twelve. Um. Do I have a street? Oh, wise? sorry, no, you don't have street wise. Sorry, I, I, I was I, going to say I, this is a. <laughs> so, I, I was thinking about that. Perception, please. Um, perception augmented by. By research. Research. Uh, so that's um, twelve, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Da, da, da. Here we go. Do, do, do. I'm not going to roll it again, by the way. 
once once it's run you will you know you will i think and, and i think that the uk what? has all oh! <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we got a crit i got a crit yes, yes. hey all right oh so. they never happen to me when i'm gming never right. <laughs> okay this is a task all right so what i'm doing is i'm taking each of your roles and taking a score derived from them so your successors give you 25 each and um ian's crit gives you a 50 so that gives you a total score of 125 which means you succeed in your aims for this evening so this is what you discover um first of all Baskill and mandelbrot you are scouting around looking for horseshoes in various places you've been quite meticulous um, you've been devious thinking about where you would locate these kinds of things um i would like a 1d6 roll from um from either you or mandelbrot either bascule or mandelbrot bascule go for it yeah i'm stealing that roll yeah go for it <laughs> it's rolling almost made it <gasps> three middle diddle Okay, you find three more horseshoes. Um, first of all, the first horseshoe, um, you've obviously bumped into uh, Sefford, um, who's, who's, who's mooching his way back to the tavern, crestfallen, mentions that Renya has fled to the, uh, to the sawmill, so you decide to head in that direction. The first horseshoe that you find is at the sawmill and it's attached to the sawmill sign and it's on the far side of the sign so that anybody coming down the main street or the main path wouldn't see it but if you're coming from the woods in the opposite direction you might do if you were looking at the sign and again the horseshoe is the wrong way up um it's kind of been hidden it's, it's covered by a bit of rust and moss and so forth unless you were really looking for it you would never see it so that's the first one the second one, uh, of course, you're getting thirsty by this time, so you have to sort of stop at the tavern. Um, there is a horseshoe above the bar behind a whole bunch of bottles. That is upside down as well. That's number three. The third horseshoe is fastened to the inside of the well. Now, why you're looking around the well, I don't know. But this is where Mandelbrot is looking. Now, the well is a typical oldie worldy traditional fairy tale well. So it's got a, a circular wall that's about waist height, a nice little portico above it. There's a winch with a bucket on that you can wind it down. And about uh, a meter from the top of the well, um, sort of uh, on the northern side, you can see a horseshoe well rusted well covered in moss but very clearly anchored against that so the well the sawmill and the tavern you've got three more horseshoes that's five in total okay so that's that's bascule and mandelbrot's successors um Sefford is busy critting in the bar buying drinks for all and sundry mm. asking questions about Simmons, the blacksmith of um of, of high dudgeon and the blacksmith here in in low dudgeon here is what you find um the blacksmith for low dudgeon is a man called naka um he's uh, actually someone points him out because he's in the he's in the tavern drinking knacker's a sort of a, a medium medium uh, build man not particularly brawny um he's got a mop of ginger hair that's falling over his eyes he's 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 taken off his, his smithing apron but you know his hands are black they're perpetually black with with work in the iron and so forth and he's sort of propping up the bar talking with a group of other people that you recognize from earlier um the people he's chatting with there's the small quite pugnacious man that was challenging you Ooh. the guy that had the smudgy black yes. stains and the, the other guys that are with him they are clad in very similar sort of clothing and you, you quickly establish that the small guy talking to naka is called black tam shandy and he's one of the charcoal burners 
and the group that's with him they are charcoal burners as well they normally spend days at a time deep in the forests tending their 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 furnaces um chopping wood and, and making charcoal that's then sold on so obviously they 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 supply a fair amount of charcoal to necker and so they're in a little group at the bar talking away um what you learn of cements is that up until quite recently, maybe only a few weeks ago, cements was a frequent visitor to Low Dudgeon, coming down here from High Dudgeon, and he always went to call on Renya. Um, he'd, he'd been trying to court her for the best part of a year and a half, two years maybe. Um, he, he seems uh, quite a persistent sort of chap, but... Um, eventually, he seems to have just stopped paying uh, paying any more visits. Uh, everyone's suspicious of, mm. uh, of segments. You know, they're, they're very protective towards Renya here in Low Dudgeon because she's had a very, very bad mm. time. And of course, she's she's the most gorgeous thing here. And you you get the impression that uh, lots of men folk would actually rather like to court Renya. She's a bit of a catch, uh, staggeringly beautiful, and of course, she's available. Um, but what you do learn, which is quite interesting, is that um, it wasn't always like that. Renya was married, and she was married to a guy called Ronolf, who was her childhood sweetheart. Sadly, Ronolf ran away with a dancing girl from the city of Is, who had come here for the Midsummer Games. Nine years ago, to the very day almost it oh, is. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Childhood sweethearts, they'd been married the year before. There was a wonderful wedding in the... They, they'd announced their engagement at the at midsummer the year before that. They were married that fall. They were hoping for the patter of tiny feet. It was not to be. And Ronolf, the shit, ups and runs off with this exotic dancer. Oh, she was a slattern, people say. Terrible. Mm. They set up a tent, you know. Oh, yes, they were charging men to go in. And she danced in private. They said she took her clothes off. Oh, yes. There were rumours of vegetables. <laughs> and there's, but clearly, it was a, a huge scandal at the time. And that, that would kind of account for the fact that, uh, that, that Renya was heartbroken. Yes. Obviously, her husband, child of sweetheart, run off with uh, a woman of ill repute. And she's uh, forsworn men ever since. Especially on the same period of time in the... But yeah, yeah, make of that as you will. Semence, though, was felt that he, he could clearly win her over and had tried, but appears to have stopped. So, Yedney, you are settling down um, Sheba and Hollyhock, grooming fastidiously, making sure the bows in Hollyhock's mane are nice and tidy for tomorrow, yes. making sure that, uh, that, that Sheba's had just the right amount of um, of dead rat to eat, courtesy of, of Bascule. He, he does leave them for you. Um, you are obviously out in the in the garden overlooking the meadow that, uh, that, that goes on to the back of where all the games are going to be taking. Um, you see a figure in the glimmering, in the gloaming. Maybe it's just a trick of the light, you're not sure, but there's definitely somebody watching the back of the cottage in the distance over by the tree line. And what actually attracts your attention the most is that this figure seems to have some kind of shimmer about them. It's almost as though they're being struck by a beam of sunlight that's being cast just upon them, because, of course, it's growing dark everywhere. And that's what makes them stand out against the tree line and... You watch this figure while you're plaiting the, the ribbons into Hollyhock's mane. And this figure, quite distant, is watching the cottage, it seems to be, and then suddenly retreats into the trees and is gone. Hmm. Um, so he will finish plaiting Hollyhock's mane because once he started that task, there's not much that will make him stop. Um, and then he will slowly wander over to where the chap he saw the chapel he saw this shimmering figure yep figure to be um and he'll he'll look around to see if there's any footprints that have been left um 
in the in sort of, in the in I don't know if it's if it's mud or sort of like in the undergrowth or and those sort of things. He's looking to see if someone sort of like just walked back into the forest. Okay, so you don't have a track skill, unfortunately, nope. um, but you can give me a give me a ride roll, a formidable ride. So it'll be forty or less. I'm not going to press it again. <laughs> Everybody's using roll 20 tonight. Oh, it's just about the same thing. Everyone's on here. Everyone's using the server's yeah. getting hammered. I'll press it again and I'll take, oh. if, if it pops up twice, I'll take the first one. No, take, take the lowest one. Oh, yeah. Let's <laughs> <laughs> roll a one. Oh, oh, there we go. oh. Yeah, definitely take the first one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the first one we've got a, a 60 versus... It's 60 on a 40. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. So it's, no, no, no. There's, there's no footprints that, that you can see, uh, but there is a vague smell of lavender in the air. Hmm, okay. So he'll sort of like look around through the forest and then nonchalantly walk, make his way back to, to the, mm -hmm. the cottage. Um, deep in thought about this weird thing, his shimmering man that he's seen. You do have the weird sensation that somebody is watching you. But when you look back over your shoulder, there's nothing to be yeah, seen. Yeah, it's, it's nothing there. That is odd. Um, but no, so he'll, he'll mention it to the others in the morning. When okay. he sees them. All right. So uh, after your your adventures of, of the evening, you'll have you'll have gathered together and shared the uh, the uh, the things that you found and the news that you've got and everything that you've learned. So uh, this may help inform your plans for tomorrow. Um, Renya does not return to the cottage that night. She's going to spend it down at the sawmill. Um, the sawmill is run by the Twallen family. Uh, there's, it, they seem to be a, a, a pretty enormous brood. They're, they're, people have lost count of the number of Twallen children that they are. Even the Twallens aren't really sure anymore. Um, but they, together, they form a very tight family unit and uh, they, they run the sawmill with meticulous efficiency. Right. But that is where Renya is staying. And uh, Renya is very, very good friends with Mar Twallen, who is the matriarch of the family. When, when we all get um, back together, we've exchanged these ideas. Do the, um, there was one of the horseshoes that was on the um, back of a sign, I think it was, that, yep. that, that was facing into the woods. Yes. Would, would this be sort of like facing in when the, where the charcoal um, burners would have been? Yep, that would be in the direction the charcoal burners would head out to and would return from certainly yeah right I'll, I'll i'll share this information and talk about the um the charcoal burners and almost like link up about the 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 little one that sort of like annoyed me early on uh, mm -hmm. as well black did, tam shandy yeah did the do these charcoal burners have a a, a good rep in this town or are they sort of like seen as outsiders um uh, you critical your role when you were researching them they do, they don't have a particularly good reputation uh, tam shandy certainly he's uh, mm. always spoiling for a fight never backs down from an argument uh yeah he, he's, he's a bit of a bad boy around low dudgeon if anyone's going to cause trouble you can bet tam shandy's behind yeah, and of course, all, all all his pals are always on Tam's side. I, I'll just sort of like communicate this that the, I um, Sephron thinks that um, the, these these are the people that he thinks are are responsible for this. You know, they're probably up to no good. Mm -hmm. You know, and they have a bad rep in this place. So forth, and when um, somebody mentions, I think one of the upside down. Horseshoes were by the sawmill, and I, I'll probably get quite <laughs> concerned about that, you know, because there was one out outside the cottage, one outside the sawmill, both where um, Raina has gone to, you know, and uh, I'll be quite concerned about this and sort of like suggest, is she all right? You know, do, do you think she'll be safe? Or 
is she tied up with this in some way? Okay. So you've got lo loads of time to confer. Uh, you, you get a reasonably good night's sleep. Um, next day, Madame Nineveh, is, uh, in the morning, you, you, you have got to go and start getting things set mm -hmm. up for for the day's performances. Um, the, the games kick off. There's going to be um, all kinds of events. Uh, the, the main events for the games the next morning are, um, uh, it's not the, uh, the, there's plenty of practicing um, long shanks for the, for the for the donkey jousting. Uh, but the main events uh, for today in the games are going to be, you'll like these, not a lot, but you'll like them. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Uh, th there will be the 100-yard dash heats, um, the blindfold hopping races, the heats for those. Um, you you can hop on either right or left leg, but you can't change legs uh, in the middle. And there will be catch the dagger. There'll be the heats for the catch the dagger event. Too. That's always popular, especially with the children. Um, a, oh, for that, a dagger is thrown upwards. Competitors aim to catch it with a clapping motion in their hands. Ties are broken on number of fingers retained. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> Bascule, I, th I think this is your. <laughs> I think you should enter. <laughs> sadly, I just might. sadly that it's only high dudgeon and low dudgeon. Oh. People can the only one of you that can... there are, you do, you can take part in all comers challenges. When the main event between high and low dudgeon is finished, then there is always a, a sort of an all comers challenge, which is sort of a bit of a free for all. So you will get the opportunity to do it, that. Is there any um, lump hefting in this one? Cause... <laughs> <laughs> We've got this down lump shanks. Sorted. There are two. There's boulder carrying, which is carrying a succession of heavier and heavier boulders over a longer and longer obstacle course. Tailor made for someone like Sefford. Yeah. Um, there is also um, log lobbing, which is effectively toss the caver. The logs being supplied by Martwell and Sawmill, especially for the game. <clears throat> Sefron really likes the idea of the all comers um, boulder carrying because it seems to um, rely on nothing but sheer strength. When tossing the caver, he sort of like figures out it might have something to do with technique. To There's gain, a little bit of definitely in to flip it over, you know. But if there's an all comers channel um, challenge for the um, carrying the boulder, then he he would be well um, up for it. And yeah. he, he he's always, you know, if necessary, he'll show off to his beloved if she's around. But we'll show off in any case, just in case she's looking and, oh. and watching. Well, this morning you're all going to get the chance to show off because you've all got to perform. Nice. Uh, you've, got to, you've, got to, you've got to um uh, earn your keep, otherwise, Madame Nineveh, as she threatens every year, you're out. And uh, she, she will even inform the local authorities on <gasps> what she knows if you don't perform up to the standard that she requires. So uh, there's plenty of impetus for you to do some performing. Renya does not appear. Uh, she does not come back to oh, see I'm what... feeling really bad about this now. Can I? <laughs> That's, oh dear. That's well, in, in a bit of downtime in the morning, um, um, Mandelbrot will go over to um, Sephiroth and, and he'll say, my large friend, oh, my, my large friend, um, there... <laughs> that was Hazard's <laughs> fault. <laughs> oh, I know, I know, I broke it. It's, it's Saturday. Um, <laughs> Just to let you know, the horse, the horseshoe above the um, above a house and then above the sawmill. This could be what's creating this 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 combobulation between you both. It could be something that's just like uh, just not bringing you together because of these horseshoes. We must focus on the horseshoes to fix your problems. Should I should I remove them? We've tried this, my friend, and you, and you can't move them because they're just too, they're magically attuned to whatever they're fixed to. Can, 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 I, can you help uh, um, bring my beloved back by removing the, the horseshoes? Can you well, twinkle them or dust them or, you know? It's very difficult to find what another magician's done to something. So um, if if we can find out who's done it, maybe we can coerce them into taking them off oh. so we need to find out who's put them on there and if we do then maybe true love will blossom which I, is what we all want for you my friend i think it's the charcoal burners 
I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what, um, Mandelbrot. I'm going to give you a a straightforward roll against your fairy magic. Just just give me a roll. See if uh, anything springs to mind. Boy. Oh, Boosha Kalaka. Well, I've I have a 19 out of 44 standard. Okay. So it's um, formidable. I've got basically. Clearly, brute force hasn't worked. Um, now, if a magician has, has fixed something to, to something else, then they've clearly used some kind of spell that needs to be countered. Ideally, you'd need to know the same counter spell mm -hmm. to be able to counter it. But what about if you just willed it to come away? Might that work? And instead of using brute force, you applied some mental acuity to it. Mm. Um, having just having this epiphany he will um and we're still at the cottage aren't we you wherever you wish to i, I would imagine you're yeah. now at, at midsummer meadow oh, you're midsummer getting um, ready to, uh, to... with this with this in mind he will he will he will say to Sidford, because he stood there he said Sidford, i just had an idea come with come with me and he's sort of and like he'll, he'll take... look around and then sort of like follow hmm I'll go to the closest horseshoe that he can think of, which would be probably the post. Gate post, yeah. Mm. Which is now the other way up, so it's sticking up. Yeah, sticking up. Do, doing all the good in the world. Yeah. Um, and, and and he will. He'll look at this this horseshoe, and he'll just just focus, and his mind is there, and he's just looking at it, and he's staring and thinking, "This should not be. This should be off. This there is nothing fixating it. You know, fixing it on there. Come away." And with that, he will try with a critical. Oh, with his willpower. <laughs> All right. A crit willpower roll. Very good. Okay, six. All right. Um, you reach into the dim recesses of your memory back when you were at your grandfather's knee and he was teaching you the various spells that you've been able to employ today, mm -hmm. telling you the stories of all the famous wizards, Sartre's neck. Coddyfoot, Widdyfoot, um, Desmiai the Witch, and how they employed various magics. And you apply your knowledge and your, you stretch out with your feelings. You, you, the force is strong with you. And you feel a tingling sensation in your arm. Um, you lose a magic point, um, but you can feel as though pulling against a powerful magnet, the horseshoe is beginning to move. And with a solid sort of wrench and a lot more thought and thinking back about how magic works and fairies and all this sort of stuff, off it comes in your hand. Oh, wonderful. Okay. I, I tend to step on the same. I immediately want a D100 roll from you, please. Oh. <laughs> and then explodes. Okay. Four, uh, four two, yeah. Nope, nothing explodes. You now have the horseshoe firmly in your hand, and it, it has stopped tingling. The magic right. holding it there has... Dispatched you. Yeah. Sephron uh, uh, would look re really amazed and sort of like reach out and sort of like grab hold of um, Amanda Brott's arm and says, we need to take her away from her, her cottage and sort of like start heading off in that direction holding on to uh, Mandelbrot's arm. Okay, so so Madame Nenever um, is, uh, is, has, has just started. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Madame Nenever's festive fellows, drawn the finest talent from all over the Elder Isles, as far away as Dahout, Trossinet, Gassinet, and even Gadelia. I present to you the one, the only, Stafford the Mighty. And she looks in the direction of the anvil and the iron bars and the weights. Stafford the Mighty. Uh, with the, the this, bloody Mighty. Here is this, um, um, Mandelbrot will, will grab Stafford's arm and say, Stafford, you're on, go. And, and, and Stafford's got, um, his passion which is um loyalty to um festive festive fellows and sort of like sort of like things oh right right they, uh, you know this this there's a time when it gets oh is the little dog wants out or is it a cat or a dog 
It's a dog. <laughs> that's, that's my son that's just come home. And so she now wants to go. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But I'd completely forgotten we got Cherry in there. Uh, so, yeah, so, and he will sort of like uh, uh, divver for a moment and then sort of like walk to his um, bar, dumbbells and bars and sort of like, <clears throat> if he hasn't, if he's not topless <clears throat> already, he would sort of like rip, rip it open and it, he'll start his um, act to um, impress in front of everyone. Okay, so uh, you, you strip quickly down to your, your tight-fitting leopard skin loincloth and uh, various women with, faint. With, with my lucky rabbit's foot still in well, it. Yeah, 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 it's got to kind of dangle <laughs> dangling um <laughs> to the left <laughs> the, the rippling musculature and uh give me a brawn roll please i like brawn rolls well you are good at them so. yeah um 13 out of 95 oh, okay that that's that it, an impressive thing you 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 bench press the anvil you bend bars into knots um, two dumbbells at once you sort of throw them in the air and catch them and uh, um grab hold of the car and you're pulling it and all the while you're looking around to see if Renya's watching you perhaps being impressed but alas she isn't you race through your set in record time um can i do one of those things when you have a bar and uh, you put people sort of like on little swings on either side and then just sort of like you, lift you, them. You <laughs> stuff. so you rolled uh let's see you rolled 13 yeah. uh, you, you make for the, uh, you, you make the equivalent of 13 florins, which will go to the greater good. Fantastic. Okay, that isn't for you. No. That's, that, that will be divvied up at the end of the, uh, of the performance. Yeah. And uh, Adam Nineveh obviously takes her cut, deducts your, your lodging, wages, uh, bed tax, cart tax, and... Uh, air tax. Any, air tax, that sort of thing. All right, so... Don't let, us, don't let us down, the rest of you. I performed really well. <laughs> okay, and uh, I'm looking Mr. at Pickles, you, Longshanks. <laughs> Bascule the Deft is up next. A decent, decent sized crowd has gathered for uh, for these performances. Um, Madame Nenever uh, introduces uh, Bascule, the, the most formidable juggler that has ever been known in the Elder Isles. This man could juggle your antis if he so choose. Speedy of eye, speedy of wrist, deft of finger, I present to you Bascule and on your step. So I will have a juggling roll from you, please, Bascule. Uh, here's to hoping my new act goes well. Oh, I... <laughs> so, uh, oh yeah, 17 out of 59. I hit formidable. It, it's still a success. So you have, you've made that with, with no problem whatsoever. Um, the... Uh, the, the None of the rats die. <laughs> Evans, I couldn't handle another one. Yeah, the the, the, the cats are in, are in a, a remarkably sanguine mood. Um, none of the rats are eaten. Well, not unless you want them eaten. Um, and uh, there is a ripple of polite applause at the end of it. Um, they they liked the cats and, and things. Uh, not so much the Indian clubs and the and the burning rats because we've seen that all before. And you make a grand total of seventeen florins for the. Okay, so uh, next up will be Mandelbrot the Destined, or Mandelbrot the Magnificent, as uh, Madame Nenever uh, introduces you. Um, so there you are with your barrel, uh, you have your, your fiddle. So which spell are you going to use to um, impress the crowds? Here? I would like to hopefully use, um, yeah, Bascule's Cats. And he's going to use um, the jig tune fiddle well and make okay. the cats dance. <laughs> but he's he's, he's, he's yeah. feeling so empowered at the moment with what's just happened with the horseshoe that he's hoping that oh. maybe he could lose use his believing destiny to augment it. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'm going to let you have your uh, your fairy magic can be easy, so you get half oh, right. again. So that's it. Okay. 66. Um, so you can make a roll against that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. 
Typical wizard. Sixty-seven. <laughs> yes. Okay, so please you, tell me one of the cats yes. snapping half. Or Okay. Oh, it just runs away. <laughs> the, the violin makes the same noise as the cats. <laughs> okay, so you're you're, the, you're attempting to uh, to to make the cat dance as uh, as the fiddle sort of plays itself. Um, the squawking that comes out of the fiddle is so abominable that uh, the cat thinks it's being attacked. Um, it, its hair stands on end. It jumps at you with its claws out. Um, you have to throw up your hands to kind of fend it off. Um, and you, you sort of throw it to sort of protect your face. It lands in the rat cage. Um, over with vascular <laughs> juggling rats, and um, yeah, the rats that weren't previously eaten are. <laughs> yeah, it's not very good, and there are people taking a bet on whether the cat will win or the rat. It's not nice. So, uh, oh. but people are quite quite impressed with that, because of course the fiddle is still there in mid air. Mid air, play <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. All part of the act. All part of the act. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, pull, pull the other one. It's got petals on. Um, you will earn, I think, uh, I will give you half of that roll. So you, you get 33. Oh, thank you. It, it's the cat in the rat box. That was <laughs> the thing that I did it. I, I, I was take the bets. <laughs> yeah, bet, betting against the cat. Okay, so finally we have got Sir Yedney. Um, so, Sir Yedney. Donkey what, Derby. <laughs> So Yedney will be uh, dazzling them with his tricks with archery, I think, in oh, this particular yeah. example. Um, so he'll bend his bow and start loosing some arrows, um, throwing apples. He'll probably ask Sethel to help him throw some arrows, and then he'll try okay. and pluck them out of midair. All right, then. So let, let's give that one a go. So if you're going to try and pluck an apple out of midair, it's going to depend very much on how well and how powerfully Sefford throws the apple. So, Sefford, we will have a brawn roll from you to see how powerfully the, the apple goes. Okay. If you succeed in your brawn roll, the apple goes up at the rate that is going to be um, favourable to, to Yedney. If you fail it, it goes up like a bullet and disappears through the clouds. Okay. You ready? Here we go. Um, 59 out of 95. Perfect. <laughs> okay. So it goes up at just the right angle. So, Longshanks, you can give me a, a standard archery roll to spear this uh, Is this, this an apple, apple or one of the cats? I'm just going... It's an apple. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> this time, it's an apple. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, it's so tempting to go with a cat. No, we'll go with the stick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the, 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 by, the, by the way, for those people watching or, or, or listening, no animals were actually... Yes. <laughs> yeah. They're used to it in our stream. Really. Yeah, and I, 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 I like cats a lot. Really? <laughs> okay, That's so a, a twenty-four and a ninety-five standard. Oh, we're equally matched. Oh. Your archery, my broad. Straight, straight through the core. The apple comes down with the with the arrow firmly wedged through it. Uh, lots of applause and twenty-four florins are earned for the the kitty. So your performances take up much of the morning. Uh, the games are going on sort of in the background, the endurance squatting has started because that could be a three-day event. Um, so lots of uh, attention being given to the games and to the various entertainments that are going on. There's a real carnival atmosphere here on the very first day. But by early afternoon, you have actually finished all your performances. Madame Neneve has grudgingly given you some time off um, but told you not to get too drunk. So you can now go ahead and do whatever investigations you wish to do. So everyone wants um, to go with encourage um, Mandelbrot to to come to the 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 cottage and the the sawmill to try to remove the um, horseshoes. Okay, you want to try and give that a go. Um, Mandelbrot will 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 do this to humour. He needs he needs to get rid of these anyway, but he's got more pressing things to do. So he'll he'll say to Sephiroth, 
I, I'll help you with this, but you need to, we need to find who's putting these on, who's making them. We said we'd deal with your love after we'd found this. Do you remember the conversation we had before the entertainment? Saffron aside, because uh, he's getting rather impatient, but if, if Mandelbrot is um, persuasive enough, then he will change his action and he's going to go off to see whether or not he can locate any of the charcoal um, burners in the town. But so, so, so for, no, I'll do one of the, I'll, I'll try to do one of them for you, but then we must try to find. I thought you were going to say he could do the rest. <laughs> I thought no, that, that ain't going to happen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, I'll, we, we shall, we, we're close to the cottage. Let's go to the cottage. We'll try the cottage. And then it perhaps if, when, when that comes off, we can then look for who made them, my friend. And he sort of like says, Probably the charcoal burners. Charcoal burners don't they don't make horseshoes. They make charcoal. Maybe they made he says, let's go to the cottage. Yeah, we'll go to the cottage. I mean it is possible maybe that, that this magician has, has has made these items for somebody to put onwards af after so maybe let we, we can follow your your line of inquiry but charcoal burners are in but it's they're, maybe. they're caught up in this somehow he's, he's, let's, he's dated on these bloody charcoal burners there's no he, he is definitely yeah. so excited on them so let's get to the we'll, we'll do the cottage we'll try a cottage and I'll, i will try my best for you my friend because you are you are part of my family now and we will do our best for you so let us go. He'll go to the, the, the cottage with um, Sephiroth. He will, again, he will look at this horseshoe. He will look deep into it. He will, you can see the cocks turning. You can see he's going into it. And he's, it all the multifacets appearing. Well, yes. magical knowledge. Okay, we'll come yep. back to that. Uh, Yedney oh, and Bastille. Keep, what keep, that, keep that roll. Keep that roll. <laughs> Uh, um, so, so Yedney will um, keep his promise in the first case to the uh, donkey jousters. Yes. Of, yeah. um, okay. You're going to be practicing with them. So he'll be going to practice them, but he's going in the midst of the practicing when he's not actually going around doing the jousting. He'll be looking for horseshoes around the jousting lists on the posts and things like that. Okay. To see no. if there's any more in that vicinity. Completely horseshoe free. I, I'll give you that one for free. Okay. So the, nothing around the uh, the horseshoe list. But uh, yeah, you you go and you will help out with the with the jousting. And um, Basquiel, what's uh, what's your plan of attack? Um, well, there's more productive plans, but I feel that Basquiel would give in to his dependency um, and look for okay. anybody who heckled him or, or or didn't give the right face, um, looking to make a little bit of money on his own. I'll tell you um, what, like, give, me, give me a roll against your petty revenge. You were obviously heckled, um, especially over the Indian clubs. That never goes down well for somebody. Uh, my take petty revenge is right here. 55 of 70. Okay, so that's a success. Now, one of the people that was heckling and, uh, and, and yelling about how useless you were and how his... his uh, his children can juggle better and frequently do, uh, was one of the charcoal burners. Oh, well, that makes together. things better. I can steal some money and make my, my buddy happy that I stole money from people that make him mad. It wasn't the leader. It wasn't Black Tam Shandy, but it was it was one of his crew. Typical and, uh, nasty charcoal it, it's burners. It's not hard to find where the charcoal burners are. Um, there, there is a beer tent, obviously. This is a, a local fate and uh, fair. So the, uh, the the beer tents. Oh, look at that! Somebody has actually just bought magic by beer. magic. <laughs> my, my son has brought me a can of Sawdust City Brewing Company Blood of Cthulhu Imperial. Nice oh, Imperial Stout. All hell Cthulhu. All hell Cthulhu. <laughs> all hell Cthulhu. I will open that in a minute. Uh, yes. Yeah, so they're they're at the beer tent. There's a whole group of them um, sitting outside, uh, smoking pipes and sort of watching the games going on, jeering the high dodgeners, um, and, and doing lots more heckling. So, uh, yes, Basquiat, you can easily find them. And sure enough, the one that heckled you specifically is sitting there guffawing, chewing on a wad of tobacco. I, uh, well, I, I want to use my, my 
my skills as a pickpocket to try and lift as much as I can from them to get to get revenge. And it's not just for me. I'll probably share with my friends. Uh, I'm sorry. Of course. Of course. Um, okay. All right. So to um, getting close so that they uh, they don't suspect you. We'll have a stealth roll, please. Absolutely. Here is stealth. Oh yes. That's a golf, golf club. Golf club. <laughs> Okay, that's uh, all right. It's let's see. What is your stealth? Uh, Seventy-eight. So this would be a critical as long as it's hard or easier. Okay, um, you just happen to wander the the um, the heckler. His attention has been taken by the precision farting heat, uh, particularly uh, silent but deadly one has just gone off. So uh, his attention is elsewhere. Um, you have now got your hand straight inside the, uh, the the sort of leather jacket kind of thing that he's got uh, casually tossed on the floor, um, and it has closed around the the, the purse that's in there. Um, so, given that you've got a critical success there, I will now have an easy. Um, I think. An, you can make me an easy juggling roll to toss that purse out and into one of your voluminous hidden pockets in one deft movement. I was going to say, I want that to go right in my hidden pockets. Yeah, so you're, you're going to... 18 of 89. Oh, excellent. Okay, so without anybody noticing you, your hand's dipped in there, got this guy's purse and flicked it up straight into your pocket. Nobody is any the wiser. And uh, that contains a, a reasonable amount of coin. We don't care how much is yeah. in there, but they're now, when it comes to paying for the next round, they're going to have serious problems in trying to make it. So, good. You <laughs> definitely got your petty revenge in there. Good stuff and well done. Excellent. Okay, so Lawrence, sorry, can I just interrupt and say we're it's it's ten o'clock here now. Yeah, we we're now at ten o'clock. I was going to say um, it is a, probably a good point to pause. That's what I was thinking. I, yeah. I, I don't know if you uh, if, if you normally go on a bit later or not. Um, I am more than happy to carry this on next week if you wish. That would be fantastic. Oh yes, 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 please, sir. We, most Care definitely. Some more. <laughs> 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 certainly certainly I'd, it would be my pleasure that, that so, would yeah, be excellent yeah if you've enjoyed that uh, i certainly have so uh, yeah let's let's carry on so for everybody watching um tune in this time next week for part two of in high dudgeon with myself in wills and the rest of the crew thank you excellent dun, dun, dun.